is our first podcast together. We've known each other our entire lives. We have an uh, amazing lineup of wild, crazy stuff, and we're going to lead off with when Elon Musk's projection is for us getting to Mars, the first humans getting on Mars. Uh, my name is Brian. I run the Dead Man Dreams channel, and for you. And hey, I'm Marco. Uh, my channel's called Musings by Marco. And so I have a ton of the craziest, wild uh, history stories that you will ever hear, the stuff that the schools are not telling you for some reason. We're stuck with this boring crap. And uh, I've been just yeah, his- cool. <laughs> I've been history binging for many, many years. Uh, I've learned a lot from hardcore histories, uh, Dan Carlin, as well as I've read a bunch of uh, books as well in recent years on it. And so we got that coming up. And we've known each other since preschool. So we're going to always have cool conversations and everything. And so, yeah. Marco, why don't you pick it up with the Elon stuff? Sure. Yeah, and uh, I've uh, I'm a longtime fan of Elon Musk. Um, once I uh, latched on to him and Tesla, um, it's been something I became really interested in. Um, I'm fully invested in the company. That's my life savings are in <laughs> Tesla stock. I'm not diversified <laughs> um, at all because uh, I makes uh, sense, though. want good returns. Um, I have more confidence in Tesla than I do in any other company, I consume a lot of information about them to reinforce that constantly and make sure that there are no holes in uh, my thesis. Or um, um, and um, I'm constantly poking it and trying to see if there are. And so far, I can't come up with anything. So uh, I'm I'm sticking with it. Um, Makes sense to me. I can't see any problems yeah. either. He's the yeah, man of the actually, future. Yeah. Uh, on that note, I mean, the first stock I was ever interested in was AMD. Uh, that's uh, I first got Robinhood um, when that be you know made it more accessible and it made it easy, and I picked up AMD was my first choice and uh, because my first computer I ever built was AMD, and yeah, uh, they've been it. the value brand for a long time, so they were kind of looked down as the value, but I al al already saw them as like being <laughs> close enough and always gaining all the time. So uh, I always thought they were going to catch up to Intel and surpass them, and that basically just happened uh, wow. in the last couple of that. years. Yeah, uh, Ryzen AMD officially has the fastest gaming uh, computer chips now, um, yeah. and they probably will <laughs> in the next set coming out. Um, I wish I had stayed fully invested in that, but I was younger and dumber, and AMD... <laughs> Tesla, those are some of the highest performing stocks of all time. If you would have started from IPO to where they are now, that's thousands of percent of gain. Um, so I don't know. I seem to have a knack of uh, liking some of these uh, products that uh, a lot of other people tend to like. And I just yeah. kind of see something in them. And um, I'm definitely a technology. Um, yeah, you've always known more than uh, me. <laughs> yeah, I've always been into technology. And uh so I kind of naturally gravitated to these things. So Elon Musk and Tesla is kind of like, I don't know, it's like crack cocaine to me. <laughs> As like it's, it's, it's innovative technology in a lot of different areas. So a it lot is. of people can't see past a car company, but it's so much more than a car company. It's also uh, bleeding edge uh, um, artificial intelligence research. It's uh, bleeding edge um, improvements in manufacturing um, processes and just innovation. Well, Neuralink. Um, <laughs> Neuralink. Neuralink is, is nice. uh, bleeding edge yep. uh, medicine and um, um, uh, surg surgical uh, implantation of uh, machines into the human body, computers into the human body. Yeah, I was in my video, my uh, first video I made. So. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, if any, we've seen ghosts. You've seen ghosts in the shell, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I've been posting so, stuff on that recently on uh, Facebook. <laughs> They've been saying stuff oh, that is straight out of my video, pretty much. So awesome anime! I loved it. Uh, I've been into anime for a long time too. <laughs> the second and that one kinda, as well. The second one's great. And this is kind of bringing that. That's the path to kind of bring that future to reality, where um, it also ties in with artificial intelligence because, and Elon Musk is really unique this way in that. Um, he uh, uh, he maybe because he's on the autism spectrum and he thinks yeah. he's admitted that he has Asperger's. 
And uh, I kind of uh, relate to that as well. I think if I got tested, I'd probably. I think I have a somewhere too. There. Like when I look somebody in the eyes when <laughs> I'm it's... talking, I'm not really listening. I'm focusing on their f- eyes. <laughs> it's like I gotta I look will. away a little bit. I'm like, and then I'm focusing more. That's what, even right now in this video, you can see it. I'm kind of like looking like I'm dazing off, but that that's when you know uh, I'm listening. <laughs> Well, yeah, because, well, there's a lot of things to it, but, uh, yeah. you know, you can always improve on techniques like that. But, um, uh, so he has just this, uh, came up with this, like, he sticks to this reasoning of why he wants to do these things. He really pours himself into it 100%, and he does it in a way that I believe that he's genuine, so I can really um, trust him. Everything he's done, <laughs> everything he's said has backed that up. Uh, on, and then he's you know, entertaining to me on top oh, of it, especially on Twitter. He's just trolling all day. Did you see? <laughs> did you see what he did today uh-huh. on Twitter? He was like saying how informative the uh, Wikipedia page is for a grape. Or grapes. <laughs> Everyone yeah, knows a grape. what a grape is. Everyone knows what a grape is. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> well, that, that Wikipedia is so dumb. But, that's uh, amazing. But also, but that's the, funny. the reason I, I mean, respect everyone him, does know, to be fair, if you don't know what a great <laughs> is. <I mean. laughs> yeah. But uh, I was going to say, though, the reason I respect him so much is like what I said in my first video. Uh, after studying history, uh, I for sure think it's just a matter of time before humans, you know, do use those nuclear weapons. And uh, if it's not the nukes that gets us, there's like a million other things that, that could go wrong to end life on Earth, you know, just like the, the video showed. And so Elon recognizes this danger, and he says, hopefully we can get out of this planet. The only way to ensure humanity lives on forever is to make sure we're multi-planetary and hopefully even beyond that eventually. So that's why I It's love so, him so simple. Much. It's so simple, but uh, no one's concerned about it. Um, you look at that movie, uh, uh, Don't it. Look Up, I that just it. came out. I love it. That, uh, you know, it sh- showcases how short-sighted um, our government is and um, it seems so believable it's funny because it's, oh, yeah. it's the truth yeah you know? yep. everything that's funny that kind of has a little a seed of truth in it and so it really pokes the fun at uh, how little um, uh, science hardcore science is respected and uh, followed by our leaders they're more concerned yep. about re-election or and maybe their money. personal Yep. gain and money than anything else and uh, that would lead to uh, Ow! <laughs> wow. Spoiler heard. alert. Uh, <laughs> I guess I should have said that beforehand. <laughs> oh, well. But there's a lot of details anyways that you miss. But yeah. um, but have you heard that uh, Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson actually talked about that? I don't know if you've seen his Star Talk. And I think I Michio, do. I see and Michio often, Kaku, yeah. I go back and listen to the old Coast to Coast AM, like paranormal radio shows. I like to fall asleep to them. It's like my uh, adult bedtime stories. <laughs> but anyways, Michio Kaku was on there for like... I have a many, similar thing, but yeah. with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, so Kaku went on there over and over again for years. And both Neil deGrasse Tyson and Kaku, they both say how when they have these scientists providing this like incredible information and it wouldn't even be that expensive to fix things like insulating the grid from a gigantic solar flare that could wipe out all of humanity and in the worst possible way imagine if the whole electric grid goes away like it sounds like a pretty death. good investment yeah and it's it's relatively cheap and so uh the politicians they say they I'm laugh i'm sure it's a lot laugh. cheaper than the uh, fix that after the fact, that's for sure. They Oh, there'd probably be too little people to even fix it afterwards. But, I mean, they laugh at these uh, scientists, and it would be a slow death. It would be so messed up, because then the, the trucks wouldn't be working. The whole supply chain of food uh, would be shutting down. And uh, grocery stores around every major city, they only have, like, two days' worth of food. It, it's an absolute nightmare case, and it's relatively cheap. Uh, there was a, a movement trying to get the politicians to listen like uh, maybe 10 years ago or less now, and the politicians still won't listen. They, they won't listen until there's a major problem. Uh, also, one last thing. Uh, they also say, areas. Yeah. yeah, they say, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson points out about seatbelt laws. Uh, they had to wait until so many people were getting killed. Elon Musk as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. him too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I meant Elon. I think I forget if Tyson said that, but yeah, Elon was the one. And it takes forever. It takes Tyson a disaster. Probably said that too. Yeah, he, they yeah, fought against so. it for many years. They knew that it saved lives, and they fought against it. They fought against the regulation, and that's any basic uh, um, industry tends to fight against regulation. They tend to preserve their bottom line as yep. much as they're able to, 
And over time, it seems like uh, industry has become uh, at a better grip on stopping regulation and um, directing government legislation. And that's dangerous for where we are now because yeah. people have, um, I think rightly so, believe that they have uh, less control and uh, big money and corporations have more control over what actually gets Lobbyists. done. I can cite... So Lobbyist. many examples of that going on in recent history. We saw it in real time with uh, an Exxon Mobil uh, uh, lobbyist bragging that um, he gets weekly meetings with uh, Senator Joe Manchin Terrible. and other people in Congress. Basically, <laughs> look to him to decide, um, you know, what to do on any uh, big laws coming up, and um, he was proud of it because um, they were trying to um, get someone in for a job interview. And um, that's the reality of it, is that um, the uh, lobbyists who have a lot of money to offer, and um, there's a lot of factors to this. Uh, politicians, uh, they get to keep money uh, from fundraising when they retire. That's one way they get to Terrible. keep those funds. The Not to mention door. all kinds of side gigs. Yeah, they get the a cushy <laughs> board job, uh, a board position waiting for them. Um, people, uh, there's recording of Manchin saying this, that maybe you folks could help out so and so in his second second life when he retires from from Congress Damn. and uh, suddenly something is offered to him uh, and he's willing to change his position on something important. So uh, that just seems like that's the overwhelming of uh, uh, of influence and in the way things are right now in our system. And uh, but without if you don't get money out of politics, I don't think anything can really change meaningfully. Yeah. No matter what party you pick, it's the same thing. What about uh, term limits? Part. Term limits for the congressmen and senators. I think that sounds amazing. But I think it all becomes they, possible yeah. once you get money out of politics. Once there are yeah. great incentives for them to stay in there so long, uh, then they True. won't want to. But uh, there are just uh, there is too much of an incentive, and you know, they get to choose their own rules. I forget who and said they're it. not really being held responsible by voters. So yeah, I forget who said it though. Uh, they said that the politicians should uh, be like NASCARs with the logos of everybody who's painting them on their suits. Uh, and yeah. Who said I think that? it was a comedian. Uh, but it's so I true. Don't know who, but it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so they true. should. At least yeah. that. That's the first step towards getting money out of politics. And maybe drug test them and stop them from uh, giving themselves raises and <laughs> while screwing over others. And uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so... Back to my original point of, uh, I guess I was just introducing kind of Elon Musk a little bit and kind of my uh, interest in that. Um, but uh, we're going to start with what? Uh, Lex Friedman, Elon on Mars. Um, yeah, do it. So um, so he was on the Lex Friedman podcast uh, recently, <coughs> and um, he was asked a question about um, uh, how long does uh, he think it will be until... Uh, the first human is on Mars, and he gave, uh, after thinking about it for a good 20 seconds, uh, which is what Elon <laughs> does, um, he, uh, he, well, you know, he calculates billions of variables uh, in nanoseconds. Uh, maybe. And um, uh, he said, best case, five years, uh, worst case, 10 years. Um, and um, he would know this better than anyone because he's the one working foremost to make this happen. Um, he's really pouring a lot of his energy into this now. Tesla is a big uh, part of his time still, but increasingly SpaceX and this overall mission is becoming um, a greater portion of his time. And people, Tesla shareholders also consider this a lot because um, it impacts the level of innovation that Tesla will have going forward and thus the value of the company. So we kind of see it as natural that eventually he will move on and focus more on that. And um, Tesla's kind of getting into a point where it's starting to power itself a little bit. But mm -hmm. he is such a, uh, makes such a difference. All of his companies are not like other companies. Like lately, I've been listening to a lot of his uh, empl ex employees who have podcasts, and they've been talk sharing their experiences how um, it's not like any other company they've ever worked for, where um, they have a handbook that's given to them that's wow. called not a not a handbook handbook. <laughs> it's like a flamethrower, not a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, um, so this basically says that like. Um, 
the most important thing is solving the problem. Um, disregard um, your boss. If you think you need to, your boss's boss, don't worry about going over anyone else's head. You <laughs> could send an email directly to Elon Musk if you feel like it. And uh, the most important thing is you get the problem done. Um, and so it really um, empowers people to um, try on a lot of different hats. They're kind of expected to. And the, the fact is they're just, they're constantly uh, innovating and trying so many new things and making so many improvements all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the fastest, the employees talk about it as like, this is, I've never been in a company that was this flexible and agile and able That's to awesome. change and improve this quickly. And um, as a result, you see a lot of people. Uh, also, you, you don't, in a lot of companies, you see the beautiful people tend to be move into management positions. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you have a good face, uh, if you are tall, if you're a man, you tend to move up the ladder more. Well, they got trolls but in over Tesla, there. <laughs> in Tesla, you see all types of people, whether attractive or not, and as long as they are good at executing, uh, they, will, um, they will move up. And um, they're given stock uh, as an incentive, so and that's been doing very well for the nice. employees there. I've got a, a side and, note, too, when you're ready. Okay, well, just uh, let me continue uh, uh, this point. Cause, um, and they're also all joined together by the fact that it's uh, this is an important mission that everyone can feel good about. You know, it's beyond just let's make a profit. Uh, you know, that's, that's cool. uh, not all that exciting. It's much more exciting if everyone knows that, hey, yeah, we're going to make money, but we're solving one of the most important problems for all of humanity, where we can actually feel good about this. Um, we are, um, if we don't do this, uh, no one else is really seems to be doing all that much. We really got to lead the way, yeah. and uh, we can uh, we can head off a lot of human suffering and Major, uh, and pain uh, when uh, climate change because it's 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 very far-reaching and very slow-moving process that will take a long time to wind down. Anything that you put in the atmosphere now, it sticks around for uh, for a very long time, uh, unfortunately. The so more Elon, we get out faster, the better. Elon said at one live event on a video I saw, he said, uh, what we're doing with the uh, greenhouse gases and burning all this coal and all this stuff, it's the stupidest scientist, uh, science experiment of all time. <laughs> yeah. But, why are we doing? Yeah, why are we doing this? <laughs> if we know, we know the possible outcome is that civilization goes to shit and uh, sea levels rise, uh, temperature, weather goes crazy, crops can't yeah. grow in the same places, food gets more expensive. Uh, all these coastal cities, uh, you have to relocate people. Of course, everyone who is, has less wealth is going to be more affected. Yeah. Um, you know, talk about GDP. Uh, so that's not a good statistic, anyways. But that's going to go down the shitter for yeah. sure. When, uh, you know, we're always seeing the tip of the iceberg. Uh, suddenly, you know, Texas is having freeze overs and they oh, have yeah. power outages already. And we've got they tornadoes, got no salt. No salt. storms. Oh, those tornadoes are crazy, man. Polar winds coming in from the North Pole all of a sudden uh, are uh, breaking through, causing uh, these snap freezes. Yeah. Um, uh, it's only going to get worse. I was going to say about earlier about the the structure of the company. There's one military mm. in the world that I'm aware of that had that uh, happen. It, it was covered in uh, Hardcore History with Dan Carlin. Japan. Japan, uh, man, it must have been, uh, I think it was the 1800s at, at the time. But they had a uh, rule in their military where, uh, I forget the exact name for it, but the, the lower level people were able to... Uh, take over the general's commands and do like they sabotaged this train and it, it blew it up and all these people died and all this crazy stuff and it was acceptable uh, uh, in the rules of the of Japan it was like a real crazy thing and so that that just triggered that memory but yeah we can continue with uh, more Elon stuff it's nice to break it yeah, up with a little uh, you know yeah. I love my well, history uh, yeah uh, i mean toyota has um the carry on the japan uh, train Toyota manufacturing is pretty good, but uh, they're still not as agile. They're still not as uh, kind of an open field um, like Tesla is structured, um, and uh, they're also way later to the EV game because they were focused on hydrogen for a long time. But mm -hmm. that's a whole other separate story. Um, so, um, 
<laughs> By so the way, where is, was I? <laughs> is, is, uh, is Tesla still the most 100% American-made company? Because for a while I saw some lists yeah, where every the labor, the parts, uh, they had the highest percentage of any American car company. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. Some will so, like to say that, so look patriotic. at Ford and look at GM and say that, you know, we like these companies because they're American. Yeah. Yet uh, they make um, most of their products in Mexico. Uh, meanwhile, um, uh, Tesla's yeah. not doing that. All of their manufacturing is in the United States. And for right now, it's in California, which is the most expensive state <laughs> out of all 50 to Everybody's probably to produce cars. Speaking of that. Yet they were able to do it. Check out my shirt. Uh, California. <laughs> Erica, thank you for the shirt and thank you for the picture. She sent it to me. <laughs> thank you, Erica. Um, so, um, I mean, now, uh, looking ahead to this year now, very exciting times because uh, Austin, the next Gigafactory, the new next generation factory <laughs> with numerous improvements. This is, this is Factory 3.0. This is... See, the first one in California, they took over an abandoned <coughs> kind of Toyota factory, and uh, they had to refurbish it. They had broken down equipment. They had everything was falling apart, dirty. They didn't know what they were doing. They had to cobble together everything. They almost went bankrupt uh, when they were trying to ramp up Model 3 production because uh, it's so damn hard to do mass production. Mm. And they were figuring things on the fly. One of the things that really saved them was they said, okay, we invested too much in automation. These machines aren't working. They're messing up. And uh, uh, we went too far on that. So let's just make up a new line. They made one in the parking lot. They covered it with tents. And it was almost barely any machines. They had people <laughs> just cobbling together cars. And those are some of the highest quality cars coming off of, out of the factory. What the heck? <laughs> and and uh, they still have. They made it a more permanent thing now. But um, it looks like I a, believe they still have those lines going. Looks like Skid because, Row. Skid Row of the car world. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing. People were laughing at them that they were doing that. But the fact of the matter is that... Um, that allowed them to produce a lot more cars, and those cars were still high quality coming out of them, and uh, they learned a lot. Um, mm -hmm. They um, they're innovating um, faster than any other company in the world. Uh, oh. Elon Musk says, uh, "What was the best defense?" Is uh, speaking <clears throat> to military terms was uh, let's say the Blackbird jet. Uh, we developed that was the fastest jet ever used by the military. Um, it would fly really high. And um, if it was uh, targeted by a missile, the only defense it needed was to accelerate <laughs> because it could outrun any missile that uh, existed. What happens so, to a missile uh, then? It just runs out of fuel? missile would just run out of fuel and fall to useless, and the oh, jet would just fly away. <laughs> that's pretty and cool. that's the strategy that Elon said Tesla has. We will just out-accelerate everyone. Nice. That's why even a lot of their patents... They haven't bothered um, keeping a lot of their patents secret. A lot of their patents are open source, so that other companies are free to use them if they want to. Wow. And they have that much confidence that they are going to continue to improve and innovate. That's awesome. That they're not relying on this, oh, we came up with this five, ten years ago. Uh, we're going to just sit back and bank on this now and collect paychecks. No, uh, we, we made this 10 years ago, and other car companies still can't produce a car as good as the car we made 10 years ago. <laughs> and now our cars are 10 times better, and the cars are coming out now are going to blow everyone's minds. So uh, that brings us so... <laughs> And and in in, in uh, California, they are just packed to the gills. That that is bursting. There's like machinery bursting out of the windows in that factory. There's no nice. room in there whatsoever. But they're still incrementally getting more production out of it. But then their next step was in China, and this is I don't know if you saw the picture. It was just they would show a picture of a, there's a money field that they bought in China, and they're yeah, the first company. I heard. That, well. There's some recent controversy, which yeah. is kind of noise because everyone does it, and they're just picking on Tesla for doing the same thing everyone oh, does. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, everyone has stores in China, and China does things people don't like. You know, yeah, okay, every product that's we not get from to China. Anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Might as well shut down the global economy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so. So they had a money field in China, <laughs> and, and and they uh, within a year this turned into a factory. It's kind of the fastest one of these things have ever gone up, 
And um, this was their first chance to create a factory from scratch. So they have a more streamlined approach. Um, the cost of labor is way cheaper there versus California. And all the all the um, the supply chain stuff. Uh, China is the factory of the world. So they are the best for getting materials to make things. It's already yeah. there because they've been making things for the last 30, 40 years. So yeah, their tech is good to, too. Tesla to plop in there and they're the first company to have 100% ownership. Usually China wants you to partner with them and they have majority ownership, so they may maintain control. Jeez. But they wanted Tesla so badly that they gave Tesla full control because what? they know they're investing heavily in EVs and they know that Tesla is just going to lead uh, improve kind of raise all boats, raise all uh, in the China? tide, raise all boats because they're they have their own car companies which by the way those car companies are going to move in just like Japan did here in the 80s and the 90s and suddenly Toyota and Honda and Subaru and Nissan they're the best cars now Chinese cars are going to come into the US just like those did in the 2020s and those are going to become cheaper and better cars. Mark my words. Mm -hmm. You're going to see Chinese brands roll in, and they're going to be cheaper. They're going to be better. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ford and GM are fucked. <laughs> By um, the way, is, is uh, China getting any immediate money from this uh, moving over there, that factory? Or is it all just... Of course, of course they're getting tax revenues and okay. uh, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone gives uh, some deals on, uh, to attract people there, but you know they're benefiting greatly because they have employees working there, and I'm sure, you know, employees tend to, oh, I'm going to leave Tesla now, and I'm going to work for, you know, Chinese car factory X, let's say BYD, and oh, I picked up a couple interesting things at Tesla, I can now use yeah. it to help your company as well, <laughs> and yeah. hopefully there's not too much, you know, direct yeah. theft of uh, confidential well. materials. But they, they, uh, you know, the skills transfer and it, it kind of helps everyone. So they benefit in a lot of ways. But the uh, Shanghai Gigafactory surprised everyone because um, they have been producing more cars than any analyst was predicting, faster and at insane profit margins. We're seeing uh, gross profit margins of above 30%, I'm expecting, for this quarter. And usually for the auto industry, it's like under 15%. Hmm. So margins are already double what other people can make making cars. Jeez. That's how much better and more efficient manufacturing is at Tesla, that what they're innovating. And so that's Shanghai. Now they got the next generation, which is going to be in Texas and in Germany. Jeez. Those are about, and those are going to be a whole new level of efficient manufacturing with their own batteries they're making themselves. Batteries are most of the cost of electric cars. Hmm. Um, there's, they're going might be cut in half. They're Great. saying, and uh, and they're making cars kind of like giant Legos now, like uh, <laughs> like mo model cars where they have what they call a Giga Press. Have you heard of this? Mm, no. Okay, so usually there's like a million robots to put together a car and they bring in panels and they weld them and, you know, all these things stack up. And if you're off a little bit on the first step and you add 10 things on top of it, suddenly that thing's even more off and you like have math. more opportunity for things to go wrong. Just like math. Yeah, <laughs> same thing. If you have a complex equation with a lot of steps and you mess yeah. up early on, it's going to get worse and worse. Oh, yeah. So instead... What they're doing is they developed their own custom alloys that they invented. They invented new metals. Wow. <laughs> and this is some of the ingenious stuff, you know, because they have crossover from people building rockets that land themselves going to fucking space and also <laughs> with cars. So they have uh, these giant kind of presses and they shoot their own metal that they invented into these gigantic molds. And these, the, these are the heaviest, heavy duty, most powerful presses ever. Um, wow. Boom, come together and force it into the shape of a car. They're doing <laughs> one piece for the front, one piece for the back, and one piece for the middle bottom that holds the battery. Crazy. Then that's it. Three pieces for the car. And then they'll maybe, you know, that throw in the doors bad. afterwards. They're going to come out with a car like every 40 seconds. Uh, I think they're doing that now in we'll China. Drop the it's price. Faster. By, by the way, have you seen the crazy videos in China of like their. Uh, skyscrapers with like wraparound screens and it's like this crazy illusions illusions that they create with like dragons Is that with, um led screens uh, like uh, they didn't explain TV it in screen? the video yeah it, it was pretty much like that i think but uh 
they didn't really explain it in the video. They were. It was just like a comp. I've seen a few compilations that were going around. I think it's, I have seen that actually. Now that you mentioned it, it's insane. They have those. They have all the, also other types of crazy it's new. tech. It's yeah. new. We we yeah. have the technology we, now, we, but it, we yeah, have a lot have of it. old buildings. We don't see a lot of new buildings coming up with this type of stuff. Yeah, all their stuff is new in China. It's incredible. They built up a lot of new cities, it's new highways, how, and so they get to showcase that stuff. They're the next superpower for sure. Let's just hope it doesn't blow up. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, we see them chugging along. Uh, yeah, we definitely don't want to see that you know, happen. We got oh, we should get into Taiwan and stuff. Remember, we had that good conversation before with all the because uh, now I saw in the news that Taiwan has American troops stationed there. That that was as uh, maybe two months ago or something. I saw that in mm -hmm. the news, and so things are ramping up, and uh, they were they were throwing down their threats. China was threatening to take it by force again. Taiwan's wanting to resist big time and uh it's a nasty situation it could escalate oh it, it I, is I, there's a long history behind that i don't know if i could do the the book the cliff notes version really quick yeah, might as well um, it's very fascinating stuff it'll mix it up away from the car stuff we've been doing the car stuff okay. for a while so uh so um taiwan so china um um had a revolution and that's how the communists came to power uh, the communists uh, started a coup and um, they had uh, wars and they had two different armies and uh, the losers of that war uh, went to Taiwan and uh, that's where they retreated to and um, they uh, lived there and prospered there for some time and they kind of lived underneath China for a long time um, and um, they were never friendly with China, obviously, because they were hmm. of the losing side yeah. and they didn't weren't Makes very sense. happy with China. And uh, the U.S. Uh, became uh, began to see them as a um, a check on communist China. You know, uh, we had the communist Russia, almost democracy, like Cuba. almost like they're Cuba, like they're Cuba. Yeah, Cuba. It's, it's like it's like the Cuba for China. Yeah. Uh, Cuba for Russia and Taiwan for China is a good yeah it's a good way to think about it. Yeah. So so the U.S. was kind of uh, closely tied into the economy of Taiwan for a long time, and the U.S. kind of pulled out of it, and Taiwan was in trouble. But they really figured out how to become a producer. They decided we're going to export things, so they started. They rebuilt their economy for exporting, and uh, they have become the best chip semiconductor manufacturers in the world no one's even close uh, cool. they have the cutting edge best stuff everyone wants it everyone needs it apple needs it for all their iphones <laughs> samsung needs it for their smartphones every uh amd uh, needs it for their processors intel makes their own that's why they've been behind for the longest time is they haven't been able to keep up with these Jeez. advancements that they've been making they they once they got the smartphone business the huge volumes moving through is what allowed them it's uh to uh, the uh because with more scale comes efficiency so they had the, the scale from the smartphone business and that allowed them to continue to improve and to invest in cutting edge technology to get to where they are now where they're in the Pretty approaching cool. three nanometers now is going to be their new uh thing you know you're getting close to zero nanometers here it's getting mm -hmm. very fucking tiny <laughs> Uh, wow. I don't know how much smaller they can go. I don't know. Quantum tunneling becomes a thing where the electrons just jump in between the channels because the channels are so tiny and so close together, and they got to be separate because that's how the whole thing works. Is you're directing <laughs> them through certain channels on the computer chip, and um, but uh, I don't know. So far, they it doesn't seem to be slowing down. Moore's law is supposed to be die at some point. So far, it's not. Yeah, crazy. Um, so they become the best at that, and um, China's always wanting them back, and. Um, um, but uh, they uh, started their own democracy, uh, I think it was in the 90s, and uh, started their own uh, democratic government. And um, the younger generation um, didn't want a reunification with China. And um, they did all kinds of protests, sit-ins, they flexed some muscle, and they actually, government actually listened to them. Weird, doesn't work over here. 
but uh, by the way, maybe, uh, uh, real quick, uh, which governments mm-hmm. are allied with the United States like strongly uh, against China in support of Taiwan? Which do you remember? Which ones? Japan is in there because yeah, Japan, Japan is a, uh, a neighbor. Was Australia? Was Australia and uh, England? Australia, was that? yeah, yeah. Well, that's and, why uh, we're supplying nuclear submarines to Australia now. Oh, by the way, the, the thing that really pisses me off. A uh, little history side thing. really grinds your gears? <laughs> what? All right, look. You know how the French gave us the Statue of Liberty, and yeah, no, look, Napoleon. <laughs> the second one. Well, anyways, <laughs> Napoleon. Uh, when things were caving in on him, America was such tight allies with uh, the French that uh, Napoleon considered escaping to the United States as the as the uh, enemies were caving in on uh, France from all sides, basically. And, uh, I mean, that just shows you how much of a brotherhood that France and the U.S. has had because we had England as a common enemy because we escaped, you know, the English uh, to create the United States. And the French and the English, uh, through the Nepo- uh, Napoleonic Wars, those two were the pretty much the superpowers and every other country around there were uh, kind of like the little guys in a sense. But anyways, with the U.S. made this new deal with, uh, I think it was Australia and uh, England uh, to share military technology uh, with them, and, and they, they did not include France. Even though France has a bad reputation these days, they were used to be the most fierce warriors on the planet for hundreds and hundreds of years until World War I showed up. So I have nothing but respect for the French, and we should have included them, and that pisses me the hell off, you mofos. You think that uh, maybe they would have had uh, some better uh, ability to defend themselves in a World War uh, Two if that was the case, huh? No, no, this is a, I, this I, is no, news this, to me. No, I never heard no, about no, no. this. This 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 deal I'm talking about. This is a new military deal that just happened, like within the past year. Oh, are you talking about the submarine thing? Yeah, that and also the submarine one, and a pl- plus a bunch of other military technology on top of okay. it. Okay. Yeah, well, I wasn't talking the about the only thing past I, I know yeah. about is the submarine thing was uh, France was a little pissed at us because yeah. France was telling them diesel submarines. Uh, nuclear submarines is like a protected technology, uh, kind of like nuclear weapons, where um, we uh, we have international treaties on who's allowed to have them, yeah. and uh, we'll flex our muscles if we uh, someone else is trying to get them without permission. So um, there was more but, technology, though, uh, evolving technology for the future as well, and that was included. And so. For some reason, we don't even include Fr- uh, the French in that, and so mm. and I, who knows? And the French could be were a angry. proxy between, you know, maybe Russia and France. Maybe are getting a little too comfortable, and yeah, I don't know. US, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, for that reason, but I wonder what this, this reason they was. They wanted to sell diesel submarines basically to Australia, and we came in with the nuclear submarines, which France wasn't happy about because it's a lot of money for their economy, yeah. and uh, but. We said we need, we really want Australia to have nuclear submarines as a check on China because China's yeah. uh, looking um, to move and expand in that region in Taiwan. It all kind of ties in together. So, True. U.S. wanted a stronger check against China, so they were willing to give the nuclear submarine technology. Plus, it makes all uh, the um, U.S. Uh, defense companies money. <laughs> And don't think that's not a huge part yeah. of, uh, oh, of course. why we do everything and Money's why everything. we have war in the first place. Yep. Uh, you know, that's uh, a lot of it is to uh, keep those profits flowing to um, to those companies and, um, you know, making money off human misery. It's uh, it's, it's become fun. very profitable. Yeah. yeah. Well, I could jump into uh, speaking of the nuke situation. We could jump into that. And I got an interesting story for you. One thing that people don't know is back during the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, when we thought we were turning those ships around before the nukes arrived uh, on Cuba from the Russians, it turns out there was already small-scale tactical nukes on Cuba. And uh, the generals were trying to get JFK to do another uh, Cuban missile uh, and uh, Cuban they were uh, Russian airplanes. tactical nukes yeah or, so if uh, Russian, US. it was Russian okay. ones and they were aimed at the beaches so if the US attempted to invade again all they the were people nuke their own beaches yeah they were small scale tactical ones so they were going to nuke the American forces kind of like a D day type of thing this came out it's declassified you can pull it up right on the internet right now uh, Dan Carlin covered it in hardcore history 
I mean, that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. We were so, so close to nuclear warfare with, uh, with Russia. Oh, yeah. If a nuclear weapons were used on U.S. troops, then uh, oh. that would have been it. And also, another crazy story is... Although uh, uh, U.S. troops, I don't think we were ever willing to really send in, like, quote-unquote, U.S. troops in, in uniform and stuff. They were like... Uh, we had the Bay of Pigs thing, yeah, that, but that, that was like uh, we were. That was like under the table type of deal, right? That was I don't like think was so. it the CIA okay. was funding a group, I'm, so I'm we gave aware. them money and training, kind of like they we no, do in a lot I, of countries. I thought, no, JFK admitted it as his greatest failure for years and years, and uh, sure, yeah, because it came out and publicly, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about that angle. I'm not sure if I ever heard that uh, before, but. Uh, the other yeah, thing but is, it's not like it was U.S. troops in uniform, like, hey, we're all invading Cuba. I could have sworn it was, you know, oh, uh, maybe. Jump on know. the boats and we're all, it's been getting, a while. we got the tanks and stuff. It was more uh, like, uh, let's give these guys money, like these will be the new Afghanistan kind of freedom fighters. Have you, you heard know, about, that uh, type of deal. Yeah, I guess so. But have you heard about the uh, Russian hero who likely saved the world? He was a, a guy in a submarine, I forget what his rank was, uh, One of the, in a nuclear submarine. They lost communications with the outside world. They had some kind of uh, whatever mm. the technology was they were using. And so, no yeah, uh, the head guy, I believe it was, it's been a while, I may, got, uh, may have a few details off. I wasn't planning on talking about this. But uh, the head guy was saying, we need to initiate a nuclear strike on the United States immediately. And, yeah, because they lost communication. Yeah, they, they assumed that the strikes may have already happened, that it's possible that the U.S. already nuked Russia, and uh, so this guy was about to do it. And then they could have submarines closing on us right now, Private. <laughs> they could have us locked in. Yeah. We could be taken out at any moment. Torpedoes could be approaching us right now. Push the fucking button for Mother <laughs> Russia, comrade, or you will be killed. I will have you. Basically. I will order you inside. And he puts a gun to his head. Push the button now. <laughs> but anyway, nah, nah, comrade. The, the Russian hero, he talked him down, and the world was saved. And JFK, by the way, all his generals were saying we needed, well, not all of them, but there was a, a real uh, plan on the table for the U.S. to nuke every single major Russian city ahead of time before the Russians got the capabilities of getting nuclear weapons, even before this time period. And so we, we're so talking on the table. I forget yeah. what the numbers were, like 100 million dead or something like that. The, and so one of the reasons why the U.S. decided not to do that is because they would have been looked at as worse than the Nazis by far. And the whole the world would have turned on the U.S. After, in the aftermath. And uh, Absolutely. so it really came down to if it was if our reputation wasn't at stake and our trade partners weren't at stake and everything, uh, sick freaking humans probably would have nuked uh, Russia. And But the thing is, this was one of the topics I was planning on talking about, we're in the long peace. They call it the long peace because after World War II, we have not had any direct military confrontations between uh, the superpowers. It's all been proxy wars. And like uh, the... Yeah, uh, and great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so basically, the uh, the Soviet Union fell because they had their Vietnam, which was their Afghanistan. They were in this unwinnable war, and it dragged them out. And there was other uh, uh, reasons why, but it really yeah, strained them. Up a U.S. debt, by the way, and we're still dealing with that today. Oh, the debt! All, all our no- wars since Vietnam were just on the credit card, basically. I can't even believe it. I'm getting water. Yeah. If you want to talk about uh, the national debt, you know, that gets brought up a lot it's when nuts. we're trying to do something to help ourselves out. But when it comes to the military budget uh, and how we got here, that's n- the that's never talked about in the news where uh, how crazy. do we get here and where does it all come from? Most of our <laughs> debt uh, has come from uh, fighting wars that we never paid for and we just uh, added to the debt for them. Yeah. And... Um, and here we are today, and yeah. it's getting harder to do that. So, plus, I, isn't Medicaid know. still broken and all that? And that's uh, a big problem as well because people are living well, longer. And yeah, and if we continue with uh, people having less kids, uh, there won't be enough young people to pay for all the old people. So that mm-hmm. will run out of money. That's uh, another thing Elon Musk talks we gotta about. We got to get to Mars like, quick. <laughs> we could have population collapse. Could be one other way that we go. It's not with a bang, but with a whimper. Interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah. But what do you I think? mean, think about it. I mean, there's a chance oh. technology could kind of swoop in and help us out there if we get that's yeah. where Tesla bot comes in, by the way. Oh, by the way, I saw a, a technology that was like a prototype. They were showing like a skyscraper that was a gigantic air filter. Like in Los Angeles, you could put that and it's like this gigantic. Sure. That's I wonder. I wonder how efficient it is. I haven't really looked into the details. <laughs> it's a prototype, but they say yeah. if you had enough of these things around, maybe the smog problem in Los Angeles could good go for away. a press release. Good for uh, a I don't good, even know, you know the story and a pretty picture, but uh, that stuff is uh, <laughs> insanely expensive and not very effective. Hmm. Uh, everything sucks then. <laughs> well, there were some ideas. I mean, you got to cut out pollution is all. You yeah. cut out the things that produce the pollution in the first place. Uh, you, I mean, we saw it with uh, the pandemic uh, <laughs> when the lockdowns were in full effect. The air got much cleaner in ca California. Everyone could uh, smell it and see it and uh, yeah. all over the country as well. I wish I would have seen it. When all the cars stopped driving, yeah. So um, all we got to do is uh, take that out of the equation. We have the technology now, electric cars. Close on all our coal-fired power plants and get rid of most of our natural gas uh, power plants as well. Solar, True. wind, batteries, and other renewable sources, and um, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, that'd be and nice. And we don't have to worry about dependence on any other country. We don't have to worry about oil prices, yeah. or whether they're up or what, they're down. What's that sound? It almost sounds like almost like a bard's guitar strumming. Oh, that's way better than it should be because it was just me tapping a phone on the table. Uh, I'm glad it's better than that. <laughs> it sounded like a bard's guitar, like some guy was about to bust in his song or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I picked up guitar. You didn't know. I didn't ever told you. I, you should, yeah. oh, I was watching The Witcher 2. Here's my guitar here. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just watching The Witcher 2 where you got the bard singing, or The Witcher 1 as well, season 1. I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why it, it was on my I'm, mind. I'm, I'm, I've been really into The Witcher as well because yeah, I saw the second season as well. Uh, I'm, on, and, I'm on the last uh, one. Don't, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Uh, but uh, that got me uh, uh, back into the games, and I never played The Witcher One or Witcher Two, and mm -hmm. I played Witcher Three, but I didn't have very good uh, hardware at the time, so uh, the game was like you know a shitty like 30 FPS or whatever, and I had yeah. everything on medium. I think I was struggling on like a GTX 950 at the time, um, and. I see. Uh, I played some of it. Yeah, did you? It was on sale recently, so I picked up. It was only like two dollars for Witcher One, like four dollars for Witcher Two, and then Witcher Three with everything Game of the Year edition, all the DLCs was like ten bucks or something nice. like that. So I got all three. I was like, oh, it would be cool to play through all of them. Witcher Three, uh, Witcher One. I mean, it's surprisingly uh, how interesting it is. Is it but an overhead? The gameplay, it's an overhead down looking view. It's, like a little over the shoulder they did. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I believe, yeah, they started to go work towards third person. They weren't all the way there yet. Mm. But the combat is just kind of a lot of clicking, and it's like a little timing element to it, but it's really hard to play. I couldn't play through it. Yeah, Witcher sounds, 2 was a huge improvement. Witcher 2 suddenly, yeah. I think that came out like 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. Witcher 2 actually looks amazing, and uh, for the time especially, but that's because I guess... When they made it, it was like at, when they released it, no computers were good enough to run it. So it looked amazing, but it was like unplayable. <laughs> what kind of business model was that? <laughs> I, so I guess it's too ahead of its time. Look at Cyberpunk, you know, it just yeah. goes to show oh, you what yeah. kind of games they make. Yeah. They're amazing, but they're very hard. To, they're very demanding. Yeah. And they're very ambitious. Um, but they're very deep. And, oh, uh, it is. I, I, I played some Witcher 2. That's actually playable. And uh, But after I played it for a bit, an interesting story and everything, but... Uh, you know, I was like, let me try Witcher 3 again, and Witcher 3 is uh, such a good game. Uh, that's the newest way, one, right? It's such a huge improvement, yeah. Yeah, that's the I one I played. I hope they come on Witcher 4 soon. It's, uh, yeah, Witcher 3, 3 cool. it's looked amazing. I'm able to I put played. on 4K now, and uh, wow, played. it looks awesome. If you if you see me blinking a lot, these LED lights, they get to me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to rethink the LED lights. No, it looks way cooler than the overhead it's lights. It's worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, how about this? I'll, I'll go over one of my the craziest history story I know, and we could take a little break and then come back. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. Which one was it? The uh... ah, okay. <laughs> Today in Munster, Germany, uh, based on uh, these uh, these cages were hung in 1536 A.D. 
what happened was they're still they're still up. They're still up they're there still now. Around. And I'll tell you how crazy this is the craziest quality construction. This is the craziest freaking story I know of, man. Like uh, from all the hardcore history things, <laughs> it's hilarious and how ridiculous how it is. All right, anyways, let's start with the basics. Martin Luther, you know, challenged Catholicism with his his note on the door, and he had balls of steel because if he would have uh, been you know caught and persecuted for it, he would have been burned at the stake. Imagine that was the uh, printing press thing, wasn't it? Wasn't he uh, the first person to use the printing press, and that's how he was able to get all these flyers everywhere? Or the uh, Gutenberg press, it was called at the time. Uh, I forget that if that was involved. Uh, Martin Luther, though, he was the. You know, I of course for, I focus on the technology aspect. Yeah, <laughs> of it. I forget that type of religion specific. That, that was a part of the story. Anyways, stories to me. <laughs> after uh, Martin Luther, you know, challenged the the church, all these other sects saw like it. It as an opportunity. Oh, it's our time now. Yeah, yeah. and so so yeah, this, this, this get ours, bitch. This insane sect appeared called the Anabaptists, and yeah, with, with, eat babies. <laughs> where where <laughs> there was wants it, so they did have a. Too. It's funny you mentioned the the printing thing because uh, oh, it, there I was I say eating babies. No, I mean it's kind of almost never mind that's not funny but <laughs> but uh let's not go there maybe. Maybe not. Uh, anyways there, there was a propaganda thing to this uh where they had the oh, yeah. anabaptists where they were spreading i forget the names there was like propaganda jan, works unfortunately one of the characters involved was jan van leiden and there was another jan uh it's been a while since i heard the names so i'm just giving you the it's cool been a info. while anyways the uh it's a hardcore history episode where i learned this from as well i learned a lot of stuff from him <laughs> so they He's took over hardcore. they took out over the town Sorry. of uh monster germany and uh the one guy was saying he had a direct communication with god and he said god speaks oh, to yeah. him in his brain and then he got everybody believing that god Ooh. speaks to him in his brain and everybody starts mm. believing this, and then they, they, really they, schizophrenic. So they basically uh, have a Anabaptist revolution in the city. They wall off the entire city, and then this Catholic prince shows up with his army demanding the surrender of the city. And uh, <laughs> the, this guy who says he was like so connected with God, he thought he was so immune to danger because he was carrying out God's will that he charges out by himself at the entire army, thinking that the army can do no, no harm to him. This is so stupid. I mean, it was like for that show Vikings. <laughs> I forget what part is parallel in that. So what do you think happens to this guy? They kill him, they chop him up, and then they, they uh, nailed his dick and his balls to the wall of the town as a, as a statement. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it gets yeah. crazier. This, this shit gets yeah. crazier. Now, uh, do the people believe him? Do they like rationalize that somehow? Double no, down? There, there, there like, was a guy. Uh, there was the other Jan who was inside the town still, and he said, "Oh, I just got a message from God. I was the true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the true chosen one." And everybody believes it, and everybody's insane. It's a fucking, fucking opportunist, house. man. <laughs> so then, you now he's the new cult leader, and. You got the Catholics. Hopefully, hopefully, at least set up like a harem really quick. You know. I, <laughs> it gets there. <laughs> Wait, I'll tell you. But anyway, so then they have like the the citizens, the women are making these like pots of acid. So they, if the Catholics try to use ladders to storm it, they'll be pouring acid on the. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it's, 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 oil was common back then. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so basically, then the guy yeah, inside of, uh, he says, "Here's well. the funniest part of it all." The guy inside then. Uh, the guy the, who's the leader uh, afterwards, uh, he says, oh, I just got a direct message from God. Uh, I almost thought you were going to do like a Yoda voice for a second. <laughs> no. <laughs> but listen, I just got a direct message from God. Voice of God I have. Yeah. I hear, hear him, I do. <laughs> that would be a pretty cool twist, but <laughs> but no. Here's the best part of the story. Spielberg, goes, or, uh, you ripped him off someone again. The best part of the story is uh, he goes, oh, I just got a message from God. He says that I have to sleep with your wives and your daughters. Oh, George, okay. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> I have to sleep yeah. with your, but I don't want this. This is what God wants. I'm sorry. He starts uh, banging everybody. Guy. He starts <laughs> banging everybody. 
<laughs> and then he's really living it up until he yeah. figures they're all fucked and, and let me uh claim that i uh you yeah. know you're god and yeah eventually the catholics get control you know after battles or whatever i, I forget that and all the banging again. stops at that point fucking but then catholic. they capture the people who were most responsible and that's where the cages are in munster germany hanging up on this uh uh, giant church. You can pull it up on Google Images right now. It's disturbing because I'm about to tell you the craziest part. Uh, they then brought, they set up this There's like... probably a way for you to share that if you wanted to. Uh, I'll, 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 you can do that another I'll time. Do it in, post, that. in post-production, yeah. I can edit it in. I'll, I'll edit the image in uh, in post-production for all you viewers. And uh, so anyways, the Catholics set up this stage like an elevated stage. I think he's it was on some, like, carts or something like that. They combined them. So then they had them tied up, and then they had these, like, tongs. They were getting red hot with heat. And one after the other, they would rip the flesh off of the, the perpetrators of this uh, Anabaptist revolution, and they tortured each one slowly as hell in front of it, one by one. That way the others had time to think about the, the torture that they were about to go through. And, I mean, can side you... Note. Do you know uh, what color the the rods would turn if you got them even hotter? White, maybe. Yes, yeah. uh, that's exactly correct. Yeah. yeah, it starts as red because that's the lowest in the uh, infrared kind of spectrum of energy of yeah. visible light, and then uh, purple is higher, blue, and then it gets to white is the is the highest. Yeah, cool. And then it would be it would be emitting ultraviolet rays as well if it went past that, but we wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But all right, I guess we could just take a and little break. And terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyways, yeah. Then they, uh, you know, put them in the cages and brought them up, and they've been those cages have been sitting there as a reminder of what not to do to the Catholics ever since. <laughs> it's pretty crazy stuff. Oh yeah, they didn't fuck around. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Oh, I got a, I got some other cool ones. We could go over ancient Rome stuff. We could talk about World War Two, the uh, World War One. Trench warfare being the most suffering there ever was for any average troop. I uh, could talk yeah. about. Uh, but all right, let's take We're that break. Kind of a mishmash uh, with everything. I mean, uh, that's fine too. I mean, uh, maybe it uh, might be good to do like uh, one topic, or maybe it is good to split up like this into a bunch of different things. But yeah, um, it's nice to go back uh, and forth for different viewers. Yeah. like different things. Back. It. Oh we're my now, God! We're back. <laughs> we are now Hi, back everyone. after we're our back. break. But since it's been edited, there was no break for you. Wow! Modern magic. All right, so we're Thank gonna Brock start for off. that. He's doing all the editing. <laughs> I love it, man. I really enjoy it. It's got you get a lot of creativity, especially with uh, CyberLink Power Director. Even though they are so glitchy, the assholes I have to fix their glitches Give away every the two secrets. seconds. But I, it's it. still amazing, but their tech support blows, and i got to fix everything myself. But good thing I'm good with the computer, otherwise nothing would ever get done. But are they anyways, all Indian, or are they English? I have no idea. Support? No, it's just oh. it's uh, just emails. I have no idea. Uh, so anyways, the, we're back now. The question is, I uh, remember Elon Musk. I don't know if he was half joking or 100% serious about... No one Mars. ever knows. Not about, no one knows if he's half joking or not serious all no, the time. But about nuking Mars uh, ice caps in order That's to terraform it. So uh, you know about it. Uh, so, I know Elon. I know what he really means. Yeah, and, and also, tight. yeah go, go ahead. Uh, explain. I'm still waiting for when he, uh, if I ever get a response uh, to one of my tweets, but I don't tweet enough. Uh, I don't have a good odds. Hmm. I uh, do talk with some people who uh, it's like the second layer, you know, where they've tweeted with him. Yeah. And I tweet with those people. They're yeah. a lot easier. They're not as famous. So it's easier to talk to those people. Like mm -hmm. uh, I got a question answered by like a, um, a former, um, Worked for Goldman Sachs, and now he manages a private hedge fund. He's a really, really smart guy called Gary Black, and cool. he does really good coverage on um, for Tesla retail. Tesla Twitter is the best because um, I'm on it. I subscribe. You get uh, there's a, there's a bunch of people, and uh, they are uh, very intelligent, and they're from a lot of different backgrounds, and they do a lot of work to figure out what's really going on. Where to the point where we've got investigative journalists. You know, working for us basically to find out what's cool. going on, way beyond what your regular Wall Street analyst is nice. just like 
Might as well be throwing a, a dart at a dartboard, you know. What about what about the nukes on Mars things. though? The Elon nukes on All Mars. Right. Anyways, yeah. So nukes <laughs> on Mars. Uh, yeah. So the, I think this was like a uh, on a Tonight Show when this first popped up, and he was being interviewed. I've seen a lot of his interviews. I don't think there's many I haven't seen. If there's a video of Elon, I've probably seen it. Yeah, um, I've seen a lot of them, but. <laughs> I think I've seen almost everything publicly available, but if it's not on YouTube, you know, it may be before then. ElonUnderground.com. ElonUnderground. I don't even know if that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, don't Sorry, go don't go. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was being asked, like, um, something about, like, you know, can we turn Mars into, the question was, like, can we turn Mars into, like, a uh, Cancun type of thing? You know, one of those jokey, <clears throat> like, late-night questions where they're like, yeah, and then we can have pina coladas there and shit, right? And he's like, so his response to that, where he's kind of joking, but it's like, te technically, this is how he thinks of things first principles. Is it yep. possible by physics? Is it... Is it allowed in the world of physics? Uh, if because uh, <laughs> physics is the rule, everything else is. is a recommendation. Yeah, I like that quote. So, um, so like, side note, real quick, he says failure is irrelevant unless it is catastrophic. That's one of my favorite ones, and I try to live by that with my channel now, with the future comedy project I have coming up, with with this, with everything. Let's keep pushing on. Right, yeah, ahead. so you're still alive, right? So uh, <laughs> you still have, uh, as long as the thing isn't totally obliterated, you have something to keep moving on with. Yeah. Uh, some of the rockets are, um, they call them rapid, unscheduled disassemblies when they blow up. Hmm. So that's all. Uh, RUDs, for short. Weird. Rapid, unscheduled disassemblies. That's all it is. Because so you, know, you might disassemble it just to figure out what's going on, but that's just rapid, it's fast, and it's unscheduled. Hmm. If it was on the schedule, it would be fine, but otherwise it's an explosion. <laughs> but so he was uh, responding, um, you know, it was it was more of a joke. He was like, if uh, there is uh, polar ice caps on Mars, so if you nuke them, you would release um, a bunch of water vapor. It's a very thin atmosphere on Mars. So you would release a bunch of water vapor and uh, a bunch of, um, uh, yeah, O2 and hydrogen basically uh you don't get a lot of carbon dioxide out of that though which uh, hmm. I think you would need for a greenhouse effect but it would create kind of some the beginnings of some atmosphere um yeah. i'm sure as people have really done a deep dive into this to see what the effects would be and we're finding more i think uh frozen uh water on mars all the time in different areas uh, they um, see they see course. out of the mountains seasonally i i've seen a science stuff on that uh and also i know mm -hmm. that that new mars rover is over there looking at the former seabeds for uh signs of life we could have signs of life uh of life Makes confirmed sense. on mars in the seabeds because over time they would die over and over again uh, yeah, i saw a video on it i forget the exact uh scientific that could be like a fossil record yeah. yeah there's certain things that always appear in the soil so it's going to dig uh, under the most likely points i watched the whole documentary on this new rover and then it's going to be able to test it on the spot and send the uh, results back so i'm surprised it's taking this long I, I don't know if we've gotten any results whatsoever back but they know that from the seeping through the mountains for some reason on mars that there could be life in the uh, cave systems or whatever over there because like i went to mammoth cave kentucky and when you're in there you're in the pitch black cave systems there's a uh, fish with no eyes spiders with no eyes and life is thriving in the darkness and as it's first, adapted yeah to, with uh, no light yeah, and no atmosphere you're forced life forms are forced to go underground and they would evolve to lose their eyes which are worthless at that point and gain maybe a better sense of uh touch or, where or sense of smell or whatever these whatever the animals are down there so there could be living stuff under the, uh, the ground and but before we forget be cool. neil degrasse tyson talked about the the best way is possibly using satellites to be okay so um, yeah so versus yeah, nuking because yeah, there are some issues with that so if you nuke it <laughs> uh you know New, same as nuking over here. It's, it's, <laughs> it doesn't just go away. That's the problem with nuclear things. They don't just go away. They, the half life is thousands of years. Oh, so. It's messed up. Chernobyl. Same thing with yeah, Chernobyl, nuclear waste. Uh, we don't know where to put it. Uh, it's great source energy, except for that nuclear waste we produce. If uh, 
we didn't produce that, it would be really great as mm-hmm. long as no natural disasters happened or, you know, or shitty Russian design was yeah. followed through on and they didn't fix it and then they did shitty testing and then it almost melts through the ground into the water table and radiation poisons the entire continent, which almost <laughs> happened as you know. But, uh, yeah, so it, that would cause all kinds of fallout. Yeah, Fukushima. Fukushima is even worse than Chernobyl. It's not, <laughs> it's horrible. Uh yeah, I mean uh that was uh that was pretty bad. Uh, it's still continuing. Think, it's it's not even under control. <laughs> yeah, I think we've gotten better at containment uh, kind of uh over the years, but uh yeah, they, they, I know they have a lot of water that they don't yeah. know what to do with. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it spills been, into the ocean. So. Yeah, they've been having to uh like use water to cool probably like uh the, the core that was just still hot, you know, is still mm-hmm. there somewhere in the ground. So they pump water through it, and then that's it's highly irradiated water, and it's just sitting in big jugs. It's like, what the fuck do we do? I would love to launch it into space. Water? <laughs> It'd be funny if we could have yeah. futuristic Elon uh, rockets launching well, into he's space. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> well, the whole thing is uh, it's expensive. So if yeah. he, he wants to make it cheaper is his main thing. So if it gets cheap enough, suddenly Reusable. that becomes, uh, that makes it cheaper if something's reusable so what about launching garbage Go, launching garbage into space <laughs> there was a away from our orbit. novel i think i read some uh star wars novel a long time ago and it was really cool because it was like uh this machine the the city planet where the whole planet was covered by a city and they produced so much garbage but they had these <laughs> like magnetic like rail like trash guns where it's like a <laughs> huge like like caverns and you like load the trash and it would be shot with a, like a <laughs> rail gun into the sun like out of the atmosphere and are just constantly shooting trash into the sun uh <laughs> that sounds awesome cool idea very cool idea i have no idea how practical that is but yeah. uh probably like if you get like if we get fusion energy maybe we'll have enough power to do that hmm. it's like you could do almost anything the problem like is like cold how much fusion? power is it, uh, what kind well, of no, cold fusion is like like a, a fantasy, it seems like. But, yeah, yeah uh, I hear a lot about it, but... <laughs> hot fusion would be a big... We're working on hot fusion, and there's, so far it's like, you know, they get to turn it on for like a millionth of a second. It's like that's a huge advancement, you know. Mm. They're like working with magnets, and it's like plasma that's like, you know, near sun temperatures. <laughs> and they kind of build these gigantic things, but... Um, uh, yeah, so should we go back to nuking on Mars? <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm mostly ter- happy with it. Nuke, nukes bad. Uh, lots of waste, radioactivity, and uh, what about terraforming know, ter- in general? Like getting the food sources going and uh, all that kind of stuff. That would take a really long time and be really expensive, oh, as far as he, I know. But... Elon said, by the way, that he does not expect it to be done in his lifetime. Uh, he said that right. uh, for, for a full civilization on Mars. He said that recently on a podcast. So. Before we forget, I mean, I think uh, the easiest way is um, they're going to have to. I mean, you got radiation over there because um, uh, you don't have the uh, magnetic field. Earth has a magnetic field that protects us from a bunch of radiation. Yeah. And you don't have that on Mars. That's scary. Um, you so, be on, uh, indoors always. Yeah, so you need, like, underground is the cheapest. You just build tunnels, dig tunnels, you're underground, and you're protected by the ground. You didn't have to build it. Yeah, you got to some drilling systems. Something. Oh, by the yeah, way, I, I love the his boring quote. company. But, uh, he says... He I has want... a company for that. It's called the Boring Company. Oh, yeah, company. that's right. That's right. He can merge both of those companies and... and oh, it's if awesome. you really, if you look at all those companies, they kind of all connect to Mars. It's kind of funny. That's awesome. But yeah, like, did he really forget. make all these companies just because he wants them for Mars, and this is the only way he can make enough money to yeah. develop them all, and like also it. make enough money to go to Mars? He, Maybe. he says he wants to die on Mars, but not on impact. <laughs> sure. I love that, that quote. Yeah. 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 What else? Uh, but what about the the water system? Should be pretty easy, considering that there's water there already. I would imagine it's not that hard. Uh, what what else? I don't know if there's enough. Need? I mean, they yeah, it's uh, like a whole they, ice they cap. Need some system kind of like we have on the space station, where um, hmm. basically they recycle all their water. Oh, it's gonna yeah. have to be something like that, where you're recycling your own urine, <laughs> your own feces, 
They're sucking all the moisture out of it. <laughs> like and Water World with Kevin air. Costner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Water that's World. That's a Johnson movie. And everyone hated that movie. I thought it was great. The reviews are trash, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. You got to be awesome. smart enough to get it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. There's so many cool <laughs> ideas in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's even the air you breathe has, has uh, moisture in it. Think of Dune. I don't know if you saw the Dune movie. I did. But I didn't read the books yet. Tubes, that, those tubes is because uh, you would lose a lot of moisture through your great. air. You breathe. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would – you'd probably have some system like that, super expensive. And uh, so you can't have a ton of people at first. But, you know, they might just send mostly robots there, you know. At yeah, first. that would be – a lot easier to keep a robot alive than it is a person. It's a not, like, <laughs> and if they and if they die, it's no one is that sad about it. You, you know what's funny? In the '90s, Michio Kaku uh, was talking about how stupid the robots are, and even after Fukushima, he said this. He says the robots, if you wanted to try to get them in to even turn a screwdriver into a screw, his exact words were, "They are." as dumb as a lobotomized retarded cockroach <laughs> that was before retarded <laughs> went out of style but retarded is too cool of a word to make it out of style all the time i'm bringing bringing it back with all uh, due respect to the autistic yeah. community <laughs> yeah i'm officially retarded so it works <laughs> yeah yeah we can't be pc all the time i'm about to start up this comedy project making the most re- <laughs> retarded and insane retarded <laughs> crazy and that's um my joke uh my character that i made for myself i'm gonna be acting as a like a pretty much a moron i wouldn't say autistic but like pretty much a moron and everything goes around my insanity <laughs> and it's just gonna be hilarious how, how close is this to your your true self uh, is it gonna be a stretch it's gonna be uh i don't know i, I think i might even keep my name the same i don't care yeah, but uh, that's with you. Yeah, it's gonna be. It, I have so much written already. It's gonna be hilarious, and it's it's gonna be half fantasy world, half uh, real world. And with the editing on the computer that I have here, I, I can make all sorts of wild, crazy effects and everything. I don't want to say too much about the plot, otherwise somebody's gonna steal it. We're pro- we're aiming to shoot uh, in the summer. Cool. I, I, I hope that works out. I would love to see it. Oh, uh, I hope to get it out. It's going to be my biggest editing project I ever did. Hopefully, I can get it out by November or December. But yeah, it's going to be nuts. Everybody I've, I've told the ideas to are just dying laughing. And my uh, friend from high school, I haven't talked to in a, many years. Me and him always were hilarious together. And me and him would always act in school, just trolling people and just doing all this crazy stuff. And so I, the first guy I thought of, after I invented this character, I didn't think of him when I was inventing this character, but he fits the character perfectly. He can act it perfectly, and he, he's in, and me and him are starting this business up, basically, a comedy business. We're going to invest, like, uh, many thousands into it and get all the social media going and everything, and uh, it's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to it. That that was uh, something I wanted to get in on this podcast, and that, 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 it was a good time with the retarded conversation. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you uh, make an NFT about it, you might get rich off it too. Ah, yeah. If it, oh, if it blows up, but I am some crypto. You can, don't need to blow up. People just need to think that it has a chance of make going up in value. I and see. All buy it. But uh, or you get a, or apparently you get a girl <laughs> to pose with a bunch of uh, skimpy outfits, and this is a, a story I just read. <laughs> just uh, this Asian girl started a DAO, it's called Decentralized Autonomous Organization. They're like companies of crypto, and her she made thousands of NFTs, which were basically pictures of her in different outfits, and uh, they now. all got bought out, and she's rich now, yeah. Crazy, but, but by the way, uh, uh, how does it's NFTs work? It's kind of like OnlyFans, no, but, it's like OnlyFans cutting out the middle, for, man, realistically. That's pretty cool, but what I was going to ask, though, is can somebody else make an NFT about some uh, intellectual property that they, they don't even own? Is, is that happening, or...? Oh, I've stolen so many NFTs. I, I look at the NFT and then I do a screenshot <laughs> and boom, I own the NFT. And There's uh, no regulatory you know, committee. <laughs> trying to come and put me in crypto jail, but uh, the, uh, you you know, can't the crypto it. jail is just like VR goggles and you, you they put them on you and they force you to fight stuff. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Well, the thing that actually <laughs> makes it unique is that, um, yeah, it's not just the picture is like the representation of it. But what you actually own is a uh, a key 
um, it's a string of numbers and letters and you keep it somewhere, you keep it memorized. Hmm. No one else knows what that is and that's unique and that's uh, on the blockchain. That's, um, that's, and that's tradable. And then the part you see is the picture or yeah. whatever they're using now. It's early days, so uh, that, it will probably change. You think it'll uh, get know, regulated more heavily more. eventually? Uh, well, it's kind of a, uh, it's a war between greed and fear because <laughs> the powers that be know that they can make a lot of money off of it if they play it right. But crypto was also fundamentally made to undermine the power of government because if everyone adopts crypto, then the Fed can no longer create new money and uh, inflate um, their way um, out mm. of uh, debt. <laughs> so the idea of crypto is that everyone, it's an internet, it could become an international money standard if one becomes that, and mm -hmm. then no single government could simply print its own money uh, and devalue the currency. So it would be a, um, a non-partial um, kind of inflation-proof currency. But uh, to do that, it needs to, uh, the technology needs a little bit of work to really scale Mm -hmm. uh, to be, be able to handle all those transactions. Um, uh, what do you know about the, uh, my friend, uh, my friend actually, I might, I'm not going to say his name. I don't know if he wants to be mentioned in this, but, uh, he's playing a game called cops and robbers. Have you heard about this? Like in the crypto world, uh, there are a lot of crypto-based games now. Yeah, uh, it, it but, used to be very rare not long ago, but um, look at this. It's becoming a lot more common recently. It's starting to get really popular, and it's starting to get like uh, the potential to gain money is there now. Like I think oh, yeah. the numbers he said, uh, he he did something where it was like an eighty dollar or ninety dollar risk, and uh, uh, I think it paid out to like uh, eight hundred something dollars. But then there's I don't understand it. But then there's something called getting rugged where I guess you get screwed over somehow in the game and then you lose a lot of money. And it's, I don't get it. I, I've been too focused sounds on like video a editing. Rug pull. But it sounds like, uh, well, even in a game or if you're invested in a coin itself, yeah. sometimes coins are just, uh, you know, people promise this and that, and as soon as enough people buy it, they just sell it for cash, and that's a rug pull. Oh, I see. Yeah. Everyone loses their money. Yeah, that's probably it then. Yeah. Well, you can see a lot of 10Xs in the crypto world. Actually, I was looking at um, a chart recently because I'm on some subreddits that are into this stuff. Um, my subreddits uh, are mostly like uh, either entertainment or Tesla or crypto or investing. And uh, one of them was comparing uh, the top crypto versus the S&P 500 over the last like uh 10 years i forget the time frame what was the top but, crypto um, ethereum or bitcoin ethereum yeah, ethereum, ethereum. Did the best. yeah. and uh i'm uh, i have crypto that's the only other thing i'm really invested in besides tesla mm -hmm. and um uh weighted more heavily towards ethereum i i used to be bitcoin heavy and now i'm more ethereum heavy because yeah i see it as having more potential and there's going to be a lot of going on uh, later this um this year even if uh, they're they're going to move from proof of work to proof of stake. And if they're yeah. able to do that uh, successfully, that's going to make a, a big change in um, yeah, how. I um, followed it too much. I'm, I don't even know what those terms mean officially. <laughs> like, because I just right. haven't been following it at all, really. Yeah, it's a whole world. Basically, proof of work is uh, work needs to be done um, to validate things and uh, call, uses energy. And that's uh, part of the security of the system. Hmm. And uh, it's always a battle, a trade-off between security and uh, ease of transaction and scalability. And uh, proof of stake would say instead of having to have like a GPU or like in this case, it's mostly like specialized machines that only run crypto code. Um, instead of having that to uh, validate something, you have coins that you have chosen to stake and kind of just leave them there hmm. and they can gain interest for you <clears throat> and um you have enough people staking to uh which should be secure enough instead because the whole point is you don't want someone to be able to um control all of the network it needs to be decentralized and um that way no government could shut it down no um single entity could take total control of it because it would be um 
Hmm. It would kind of forces would balance each other out if someone did try to buy up everything. Yeah. So proof of stake will be a big deal because uh, energy um, uh, usage is a big con- uh, criticism of crypto right now. And that would yeah. uh, basically cut that down. Okay, um, Elon talked like, about that. I remember. To near zero. Yeah. So he was seeing like, especially he was seeing in China, like uh, bit, it was China used to be the number one country for Bitcoin mining. Mm-hmm. And um, they, uh, it was so profitable that they were even like coal power plants that were too dirty and they were turned offline. People would spin them back on and just to do crypto to mine Bitcoin. Jeez. So it would be the most polluting power plants in the world, and they were abandoned. Oh, and people would just <laughs> and just go move in there. Sure, people mm-hmm. would just move in there, and they would attach all these like either their GPUs or the specialized machines, and they're cranking out. They're taking all the power from it, and they're making a ton of money. But it's so polluting. So mm-hmm. uh, Elon saw that, and um, he halted um, Bitcoin purchases. He was uh, allowing people, I think, to buy. Tesla cars with Bitcoin for a short period of time, you which know, was a big move. <laughs> you know what threw a, me over? Uh, the day before China's announcement of the banning of crypto, I was seeing how good Doge was doing, it was Dogecoin, and it was going, it was doing so much better. I feel, I felt like I was just gonna hop in and get out real quick. FOMO, FOMO. <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't fear of missing out though, because um, I had some money to invest, and I was like. I feel like this is the best way to go right now, just for a short term, because I could have went with like the, a, the safer bet. Trade. With yeah, exactly, I could have went with the safer bet of Ethereum or Cardano or even Polkadot. I don't know much about them, but I saw that they've been doing much better. And uh, so I get in, and then it crashes like hell. And so eventually, it'll probably go up. I hope Elon does his thing and bails me out on this. <laughs> but uh-huh. I, I, I wasn't heavily invested or anything. It's just. It was just I think the fun. biggest uh, dump in Dogecoin was when it went, ran up to Elon's appearance on Saturday SNL. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and a huge run up. I was trading it at that point. I because uh, I knew it would run up to that, <clears throat> and I had a feeling it's a classic um, uh, thing you see a lot in uh, investing is buy the rumor and sell the news. Oh yeah. I so things will run up on uh, expectations, and then as soon as the news comes out, it's, people it's will jump it. Yeah, it's whether it's, it's mainstream. good or bad, a lot of times yeah. uh, people are just—it's um, a psychological thing. So I bought up and I sold at that um, kind of uh, at the peak there, and made a little bit of money on that. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Elon thought I don't know what people thought. He was like tweeting about it, and they thought maybe oh this he's gonna like officially back it he's gonna say like i own dogecoin now and i'm putting engineers on it, and they're gonna make it the best crypto <laughs> in the world and but tesla is gonna use it for payments exclusively and it's gonna become the uh, the currency of the universe and we're gonna use it yeah. to, <laughs> to, to to colonize mars and That'd for satellites awesome. and everything but he did but, talk about it on the lex friedman uh podcast as well uh he actually praised it uh i forget what he said was it low uh transaction cost it's fast and is practical for uh, daily use of transactions. He, so he gave it some praise. Still, it's true. Uh, it's true. Um, and I've seen, uh, I've heard a lot of back and forth on this. Yeah. Um, and um, it does. I don't know how uh, how well it would scale up if a lot of other people started using it. Because right now, not a ton of people use it. Hmm. So that's part of the reason why. But I believe um, he does know what he's talking about, so it probably would scale up pretty decently. But there's no one really working on it anymore because it was made as a joke <laughs> that they weren't trying to pretend that it wasn't. They yeah. literally made it as a joke. Why and, isn't it Doggy uh, Coin? Doggy Coin is cooler than Doge. Come on, Doggy. Because of the meme uh, that was popular at that time, uh, it was a meme with the uh, Shiba Inu, yeah, yeah. and they called it Doge. So uh, that's why. They, oh, they called the meme Doge? Yeah, the oh, meme was the, had no. Doge in, in the oh, meme. I wasn't familiar. So, yeah, I got you. Yeah, it went onto a race car at one point. It was a Doge race car, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was all over the place for a while. Yeah. And it's hiding before making this comeback. And I've seen it in some crazy billboards. People have put up Doge stuff. And, <laughs> you know, just same thing with, like, the AMC and GameStop investor stuff. Well, they'll, like, dress up in monkey suits and go over to, like, 
Wall Street and like run around in an ape suit and stuff. And, and like Shiba Inu the took off too. Remember Shiba Inu took off like crazy. Yeah, there are a bunch of clones of the coins or similar at a do- dog in the name or something. Yeah, you know, people. It, it was just like the guy saying, "I hear God now. Let me fuck everyone." You know? <laughs> yeah, and that was basically in belief crypto systems. form. Humans and their belief yeah. systems. <laughs> it's opportunism. Yeah, so uh, people saw an opportunity to make money and they did, and everyone. You know, and the no knew that those weren't going to be serious, but yeah. uh, they saw the price going up, and everyone thought, well, as long as I get out before the next guy, you know, I'll still make money. So everyone was thinking that. Yeah, it's you just, know, it's not crazy. everyone can win though. It's a not it's a zero sum game. So yeah, as long as you're the earliest, you got to be the least greedy out of everyone if you want to hope to make a return and, and you get out speculate alive. early, and then. I guess hopefully it'll stay the same price or, or at least won't go down. And then maybe you got the lucky one, which is going to go up fast, you know. Yeah, that's kind of a, a thought process in crypto is like, just let me invest in the shit coins they're called yeah. and just throw some money at shit coins. And, uh, you know, what, even if one of them, uh, <coughs> nine of them fail and one makes it, if it goes up, you know, uh, it has to go up past 10x to make a profit. So if it goes up a thousand times, I still yeah. made a really good return. Just like what Eon and, said, failure is irrelevant unless it's catastrophic. And there you go. Same with that. Except most of more than nine out of 10 fail. So it's very hard <laughs> to make a return on them. You're like, most even likely if you got, lose by that money. though, even if you got like 50 coins and the only one of them skyrocketed to the moon, you're still good. Yeah, it's slightly better than playing the lotto. I'll give it that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're moon still. Coin. Uh, we were hoping on yeah. Mooncoin going skyrocketing, but it's... Safe Moon was another one that was popular for a long time. Safe Moon, it's safe. Let's go to the moon. <laughs> Come on, it's right in the moon. That's pretty hilarious. Them. What's the funniest yeah. crypto names that you could think of? I've seen some funny ones like Puss Coin. <laughs> I think there was yeah, one. There's Porn Coins. There's yeah. one for Pornhub. There's a Cum Coin. <laughs> there's. Uh, <laughs> There's all kinds of them. <laughs> I would like to keep going through I, I, these I, just I to laugh. It's hard to even invent anything at this point because there's so many variations. <laughs> oh, jizz <But> coin. <laughs> I think I said that one. There's a jizz coin. Yeah. <laughs> That's so retarded. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, man. People are funny. But really, but, you know, once there's a bear market, then uh, all those disappear and you're left with, like, maybe the top five. So, yeah. That's why if you didn't invest in Ethereum or Bitcoin in the last 10 years, you were, you know, yeah. you got, Car- out of luck. Cardano, uh, seen, what do you think about Cardano? Cardano? New, it's mostly... Uh, oh, a new, what did you say, a new? Um, you said Card- what did I say? I, I, it, it went quiet on me when you said Cardano is a new. I thought it sounded like you said... I just, yeah, I was just starting to say something. Oh, uh, Cardano okay. is newer... Um, there's uh, a lot of criticism of Cardano with um, where it's more marketing than capability. They put a lot of money into spreading the word. And, it just skyrocketed uh, so it, 9% uh, yesterday or something like that. I just saw the uh, the news uh, on there. I didn't read why, but I, I have some. But 9% is like a normal day for any crypto. It's yeah. like not a big deal. I guess but, th- there's uh, parallels between that and Ethereum, though, from what I hear, because then you could have all sorts of other projects or whatever. Or, right. Yeah. That's why they started them and Solana is another one. They're so, it's supposed so, to be yeah. the Ethereum killers. Where, uh, there's, yeah, they're behind. There's, like, but... there's all the Tesla killers. You know, They're supposed to kill Tesla. Yeah, right. But that's <laughs> like, that's uh, much working out Elon. for them. No way. Elon's the man. And he also, oh, I was going to bring this up. Did you see when uh, Jeff Bezos is, what was it, what's his company called, the Space Exploration One, Blue Orbit, was it? Is that the one? Uh, Penis. Is it, That's the right company, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, he brought William Shatner into space, and this pissed me mm-hmm. off, another pissing me off moment. <laughs> we saw the video where it had all the people going, woo, that one? <laughs> yeah, because, no, no, I was watching it uh, live as they landed. And Will Shatner, they, they didn't show you this in all the replays and stuff. Shatner had his mind blown, and this is one of the most legendary actors of the I United saw that. States. Yeah, so he's like. I didn't say it live, but I saw. Uh, yeah, but he I kept going on and on about this experience, this transcendental experience that he had. And then right. Bezos is like not even listening. He's just like, where's the champagne? He's like a freaking crack addict for uh, his champagne bottles to spray him all over the place. And he ignores him. And it just, it was on so top pathetic. of that Shatner is a recovering alcoholic. Oh, I didn't know that angle of it, but I mean, yeah, 
Just to add the cherry on top. I mean, he offers him a drink. Think, <laughs> think about how cool uh, uh, Elon is compared to these other scumbag millionaires like uh, Bezos. Like for him, I mean, I like Amazon, but I mean, <laughs> it's convenient. Just, but uh, the or even uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates sucks too. He's just always got his little pink sweater going. He's just like. <laughs> Yeah, pink sweater definitely makes no, him no suck. humor. Yeah, <laughs> you can jump over a chair though. So that's, as Alex uh, Jones uh, always says, uh, I like Alex Jones for his humor, and he goes, uh, "Oh, I'm not threatening. I'm not threatening now because I got the purple sweater on." <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people claim Bill Gates is about like population reduction and all that stuff. And there's some clips that look pretty demonizing, but who knows? Maybe out of context. I never looked into it too much. But that's why Alex Jones hates on him. And uh, but you know, I just love humor in general. I'm like the biggest troll of them all. <laughs> so you know, uh, what else we got to talk about? Got anything else cool? All right. So yeah. So um, so back to Tesla. So um, I started on the Austin factory and why it was going to be such an improvement. This is factory yeah. 3.0. And um, uh, some of the major things are, so I talked about the Giga castings. They're basically going to make the cars like model cars, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a big improvement. The second is they're going to start making their own batteries for the first time. Yeah, that was that was. They've been buying batteries from other people the whole time. So they invented a better battery on top of it. Um, uh, A lot of new things they invented that are going into this. new form factor, a new way of uh, putting it into the car, and it's going to be so solid. It's going to be like racing car technology where this honeycomb structure is going to add the super rigidity to the car, hmm. and uh, it's going to, it as a result... Safer. Oh, they're already the safest cars in the world by far. A Tesla, if you care about your life at all and you drive, you should own a Tesla because your chances of dying or being injured in a Tesla versus any other car, it's a order of magnitude. It's like 10 times more what if of you, a difference. Uh, what if you drive? I hear drive? nonstop accidents of people getting accidents yeah. in Teslas. And they walk away without a, with a scratch. And other people who hit them, I just heard about a guy T-boned a guy in a Tesla. He walked away. The guy who T-boned him was had like a broken arm. They got like ambulances coming Jeez. in. Airbags. Are, uh, Teslas are just covered with airbags everywhere. What, they what got about the, the the automatic uh, accident uh, technology? Uh, accident, right, uh, right. So, so they got a Elon computer that about, can kind of take yeah. over and, and help reduce so, the severity of any accident yeah, Elon already. Talked about that, and it's only getting better. So that's not full self driving. That's yeah. just a, a collision avoidance. The news is always so unfair. They only highlight the Tesla problems. And then Elon points out, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah he, 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 more like, people like imagine how stories. many drunk people were saved by Tesla vehicles from drunk uh, driving and swerving sure. all hard or uh, passing out at the wheel. I mean, th- doesn't the Tesla automatically take over now? Or is it, it is, it's at that point now, right? I think Elon said that. Well, uh, one, um, this is the problem with um, inventing a system like this. And Elon said this. He's like... Even if you sa- if you save ninety percent of all the people who will have been killed by car accidents, the ten percent who you cause to die will sue you. Oh, that's brutal! This world, blows. right? That's a reality of the system, right? So this whole we world lose sucks. like thirty thousand people. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, we lose thirty thousand people a year dying car accidents in the United States, right? So mm-hmm. in this scenario, you'd be saving. 27,000 people, and but 3,000 people a year would still die, but because of Tesla cars in control, they would want to sue Tesla uh, that it killed them, their family members, and etc. That's kind of just like a human nature thing, right? So yeah. you don't get as much credit Sweet. for the stuff that you do good, but no one notices. It's not as noticeable if no one's there's yeah. no tragedy, yeah. but the tragedy suddenly gets a lot of attention. And there's a hyper focus the on that. That's how the news makes their money. If and it the leads, news it leads. amplifies that. Yeah. Right, right. By the way, but um, but the ask, system oh. is uh, is really cool. Yeah, the FSD system in, in general, and uh, they're already the safest by far. <laughs> and that autopilot stuff does save a lot of lives right now. And uh, there's there's statistics and just pages of pages of this. There's billions of miles driven already. They got all the data, and uh, they got their uh, their beta. There's a closed group of people who are testing out the uh, the cutting edge software where they're updating it every week. And they're trying to let the car drive itself, or you're you're supervised, and you got to be ready to take control any second. 
but the car is yeah, steering. Yeah, you have to have your hands. Gas, Don't you have to have your hands have to, on the wheel? You have to touch the wheel every certain amount of seconds. You really mm. should keep them on there. And but the car will attempt to, you know, drive through city streets and more crowded. Right now, it's does pretty good in suburbs. Uh, it struggles in like crowded downtown, kind of crazy. Like if you're in downtown Chicago, oh, downtown like rough. Seattle, Civilians something like that. all over the place in rush hour. Oh all the God. weird streets, traffic cones. You know, there's a one way, there's a t there's not, there's a that there's turns a little bit going this under, way, going underground, and then there's a street yeah. right above it at the same time. Like uh, yeah. the Wabash, lower or was it Wabash? Yeah, or, or, like there's an elevated train, right? And then maybe there's yeah. like columns that are like go down. You got to go around. There's all these weird things so it's uh you know it's not good at that stuff yet but the point is the rate of improvement and that the software is able good. to you could see this huge leap where suddenly it's 10 times better like over a week it's huh. possible wow. with how software works nice. so you like at any moment they could rewrite it and we could see like a seismic shift in its capability hmm. and uh elon has said when that happens uh, when the flip uh, the switch uh, flips, this will be the biggest increase in value of any asset in human <laughs> history. Those cars suddenly will become the most valuable thing. It's like if it was made out of gold, it still wouldn't be worth as much as the car Get this, uh, that's though. able to drive itself. Eventually, the, they're going to be so safe, it's going to be illegal for humans to drive cars. Absolutely. And so absolutely. that blows my mind. I mean, the we're public living... will demand it, it because you'll be reckless than uh, yeah, the murdering those, people. Uh, People Eventually. are dying all over. So there'll probably yeah. be some like uh, racetrack type places where you can do it yourself for fun and you accept the risks or whatever, or maybe even certain communities or whatever. But that just blows my mind. I would like mind. that still. I like that. I went to a go-kart track recently where you drive like these little electric go-karts. Yeah, you told me about it. We almost did that together when I was out there. We, we didn't do it. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, But, man, oh, by the way, uh, we, I we took lived some together hits. for seven months, me and him. We lived together for about seven months in Arizona out there. We met each other in Chicago. Just to yeah. throw that out there so people understand our who we are. <laughs> yeah, we know a lot about each other. Yeah, um, yeah but I was uh, pretty banged up uh, after that. Man, getting older. It, uh, Dude, it sucks. I, I don't want to. Do I had a thing in my neck. Already. I had a thing in my neck. At first, it was like in my neck and my lower back, and because this one guy nailed me really hard. Uh, mm. At first, I didn't understand that um, you had to get way better traction if you have the seat more back, especially the way I drive. Whoa. So yeah, because you need the weight that. on the rear wheels. Oh, uh, otherwise, like, you they drift. Don't... You drift on those two. Yeah, oh, I'm, that makes I'm sense. always drifting. I oh. whip around the corners and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so, awesome. And, so it was going too much, and this one guy like really whacked me really good. So, uh, but that was my first race. Yeah. Second race, I figured that out. I asked the guy for some advice who works there too. He was like, "Yeah, probably set it back more and stuff." And uh, the second race, I uh, I was only I started second, and pretty early I got around the first place guy, and then it was clear sailing, and then I was just lapping everyone. <laughs> and I was first place on that one. That was hear a quick, good. quick uh, funny story, real quick before I forget it. My, oh, one more. Th okay, right, okay. But uh, when I was done, I think uh, one of my mo I was like fist pumping the air. There were like a bunch of kids like looking. There's like a screen that shows the scores. I saw his first place, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like near some kids' heads. But like you know, I was controlled about it. But like I saw some people looking at me. <laughs> so I was, like, That's away. awesome. Uh, I was going to say, Ali Law is one of my favorite YouTubers ever. Uh, he, he had this thing. Uh, he's from England. He's this like, wild, crazy guy. I, I supported his cause by buying a hoodie. And uh, him and his friends would always break into, uh, they would sneak in and do overnight challenges, they were called. Where that was those like parkour people? Uh, no, no, that Storer, who I love a lot. Uh, Ali Law is just this more wild uh ginger uh type uh hilarious uh Gingers. english guy yeah he's hilarious man anyways uh he's calmed down now uh, he's not doing all the crazy stuff uh he used to do but they uh he's made some money now they snuck yeah <laughs> and he's got a girlfriend but he doesn't have he, to he snuck into uh or not uh, he wasn't the first one in this occasion but one of his friends i believe it was uh snuck into this uh what they do is right uh, business is about to close they sneak in and like hide in like closets or like hide behind tires near the racetrack <laughs> once all the employees left at this uh go-kart place they just had a freaking party all night ordered pizzas and were just going crazy <laughs> on the go-karts all night it's an amazing video man i, I and 
And then the, the uh, but if this is real and there's video evidence of them breaking and entering places, it wasn't breaking and entering. Charged? No, it, they, the, he he has gotten a lot of uh, uh, charges on him. He he could not commit any more crimes in England. Otherwise, he was going to go to jail, and so he would travel the world committing to crimes instead. Oh, <laughs> Many different ones, sense. going to hitting up skyscrapers, dangling off the tops, like like the most. I would imagine stuff. if you so, sneak in some place, you're staying overnight. That's illegal trespassing, and yeah, maybe but you're not arguably dating. breaking and entering. You're not stealing anything. You're just uh, throwing yeah, a party. Yeah, it, it's not that big of a deal. If uh, well, they got him on a charge, I, I guess think it depends he had on some how tea. He is on cleanup. He you had know, some, they leave trash There everywhere. was some tea in one video. The, the police were looking at every video, and he had some tea, and they left money for the tea. I think. And uh, they claimed there was Did no money. Get and then... dragged? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Sorry. But, but the uh, but the videos are crazy. They go to uh, sneak into trampoline parks and like hide underneath there, and they just go crazy, man. It's it's some of the funniest like wild stuff on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, there, so what was the point of this again? Uh, we were, you were talking about the uh, go kart uh, stuff, and yeah, that was yeah. the go kart it... thing. I was just oh, talking was... about. A, a funny story. I thought, I thought there was something else that where it was going somewhere, like you supported him and uh, stuff. Nah, he's chatted with me once or twice uh, on uh, uh, social media here and there, but yeah, that's about it. Like he's just awesome, and <laughs> I support the cool people. Storer is also amazing. That's my other. That's the parkour crew. They did uh, Roof Culture Asia. Just type it in on YouTube, guys. Roof Culture Asia, the best of uh, Roof Culture Asia, and Storer spelled. S T O R R O R. It's like these guys were jumping over gaps between skyscrapers. Every single chance that they had, like ev if everything didn't go perfectly, they're falling to their deaths. They, they were at their absolute prime in this uh, stage of their careers, and uh, it's just incredible. They still put out a, yeah. a video every Monday. They've toned it down. They do more safe stuff these days now that getting older. that's pretty wild to watch too which one watch free climber videos oh free climbers exactly i love it they, yeah they climb cliffs yeah, yeah i just saw one uh, recently a guy did a speed run where he climbed this thing called the uh, uh lovers cliff something like that and he hmm. timed himself he did it in like three minutes did like so 500 feet or something and he's basically not stopping he's like he even at one point had filmed them where he had to do a leap and he had to jump up and catch a lip and uh, oh, you know, I know. just kept going. <clears throat> Damn that! Uh, is that that Alex H H Honold or uh, the guy who the sure. guy in Yosemite? They made a documentary. I think I think his name was. Oh, he, he's dead now. I do know that he's dead, but he didn't die from free climbing. What? He he died what? from uh, uh, um, like a bungee jump later on. Because he did. Funnily enough, how, how dangerous free climbing is. He actually was attached to a rope, and that's how he died. I had no idea about that, but did you see that? If you got to watch the documentary where, uh, yeah, Alex Honnold, I think that was his name. I might uh, have it slightly wrong or whatever. Uh, you might want to look it up if you could. Uh, otherwise, I got to turn sideways and turn on my computer and look like a weirdo. But, uh, mm -hmm. anyways, he did the biggest peak in Yosemite. Uh, with and he practiced over and over again, and they show him practicing. One time he tried going for it first thing in the morning because you have to manage the uh, the degree of how much sunlight is going to be distracting you or blinding you or uh, the heat factor and everything. He abandoned one uh, uh, climb through because it felt wrong. And then they had him, you know, bailed out safely. Then eventually the day came and he did it, uh, the free climb, and it's so suspenseful because they show his girlfriend like crying and like uh, she could not stay there to watch the thing live. She had to leave the site because she didn't want to watch him fall to his death. I mean, it was that intense. And then he gets to the top and then he calls the girlfriend and it was like super epic, man. It, it's an unbelievable documentary. And they have also, the, uh, as a rule, they had no downward facing cameras from like top down uh, the angle that would have captured his death if he did fall like straight down watching him fall all the way down to the trees or whatever was down there again so that was their rule so they didn't want that uh, death footage out there and by the way i could see why this guy right here little peep he uh was on tour dude was a genius the music's not for everybody of course it's for me he's my favorite of all time now since i discovered him he made uh, 350 songs, maybe as high as 370, with uh, unreleased stuff in four years. About four years. What the hell? Mm, I just listened. 
But it's like I've only heard about maybe six or seven of them that I didn't care for. Everything else is just gold. But he died in his uh, tour bus in, I think it was New Mexico, at the age of 21 only. This guy was going to be a of, uh, Cinderella. A, mu oh, a musician? It's a band called Cinderella. I don't know if they dress like uh, guys who dress like girls. I, I think know. they did. Let me, let me finish they were that like a story, hair though. metal band. Okay. His friend, uh, people would fall asleep in the, uh, like, sitting upwards and everything. Uh, I pretty much all the time, every night. And so his friend saw him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I thought he was going to be over here working out to look good for the ladies for the shows and everything, but he's already sleeping. And he actually filmed him dead, and the footage got out there. And this sick world has these pieces of shit who make memes about him showing his dead fucking body, and it pisses me off, man. <laughs> it's crazy. So You got to laugh at how uh, crazy the world is. Otherwise, yeah, what are it's you sickening. Do? It's well, look at people who work in like uh, if you're like a in the in the healthcare industry. If you're like an ambulance driver, they see yeah. so many corpses every day. It's like you get desensitized yeah. to it. So you know you want to have respect for life, but at the same time, they need to keep themselves yeah. sane. So you see so many dead people, they just start making jokes about every corpse my, they my see. My friend, you know? yeah, they did that during COVID. And uh, remember those uh, that uh, those African guys to that music, the meme where they're like dancing with the coffin and they're playing. Oh, yeah. that they, the That's nurse, a good one. Nurse, <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> that is. Yeah. But it's a good meme, but the nurses were carrying a COVID patient like, doing that yeah. dance. That, that was wrong, dude. <laughs> that was pretty funny. The, was, the nurse thing is horrible, game. but... Because that was, it seems like that was like the cultural thing. Like they were dancing with the coffin. I don't know what the hell I was I've at, seen but, memes where they uh, they put like different crypto on everyone's face. <laughs> I've seen one where they put like Elon Musk on one of them, or they put like other billionaires. I forget. Like it fits in so many nice uh, contexts. It's, yeah, it's really a good meme. Anything that dies is like, but you know, you can't be carrying real living human like, now recently dead humans from the COVID crisis. I know you got to keep yourself sane, but that's just, and that's too much for me, man. You got to respect the dead, you know? It's, you know, I got to... Once I'm dead, people can disrespect my corpse all they want. I won't oh, be around. Speaking of that, I was meaning uh, with a show, uh, a channel like mine named Dead Man Dreams, uh, what, how would you want to die? And at yeah, one age... I understand I, the, the dead man name. You got a lot more <laughs> respect for your, your kind. Yeah, but think about it how would you want to die what age and what's your ideal way of leaving this world i have a really cool answer and i wanted to hear yours first so i don't influence it <laughs> how do i want to die <laughs> yeah just uh, at what age at what age and, and what method age? yeah any age any method and you know uh, this should be well. an interesting I would like to uh I was like sci fi books uh growing up with um like uh transplanting your consciousness over to uh some type Cyborg. of uh, electronic storage medium. Yeah. And once your brain is copied basically <laughs> then you could uh live forever in like some type of uh you know, robotic mm -hmm. cyborg body that like replicated all your senses. So you basically Maybe. gotta have sensors that replicate you know, eyesight, hearing, taste, and all that stuff. And if, you know, technology gets good enough, you could do that. So, um, I don't know if that's possible, to be honest. Like, it's, it, it's possible you, from a physics perspective, as far as we know. But, uh, there's well, nothing stopping it. Well, uh, I don't know, but how, but how would you want to die? You were just saying you want to live forever? No, I mean, if uh, that was an option, I guess it depends on what we're putting on the table here. But if that's on the table, then I would go for, you know, maybe a couple million years. And, uh, you know, maybe in some different galaxy, if I was able to, yeah, like, make it over there. shut off my brain. Yeah, I could shut off my brain for interstellar travel, you know, because yeah. it takes, it depends. If we can only travel at the speed of light, then you would still take, like, long periods of time. Yeah. So either, like, wormholes. I have to shut off my brain. Get wormholes going. Yeah, or, you know, or maybe if uh, technology advances enough and we're all living in a simulation anyways, I could just create my own inner simulation in our simulation where <laughs> I pass my time away <laughs> inside of it. So, or I just, what if I reset my memory and then I, like, start up as a new life 
And uh, it's like that Rick and Morty episode where like oh, you, you uh you uh your the game is like it wipes your memory and you live a life and you live like this accelerated lifetime yeah, until yeah. you die. I remember that. And one. then it's, and everyone watches it and they just like it shows like Morty is like he like his whole life he like works in like a furniture store and shit and he gets cancer. And yeah, he, like, I remember that. Like it beats it and he goes back and he's like his life ends up kind of shitty. It's like <laughs> and then he dies. And he like something falls on him or whatever and they're like you went after the fucking. Furniture? You went back to the furniture store after you beat cancer, and then, like Rick uh, starts playing. He's like, he's like, he's going off the grid. He's like, goes in the forest. He has like no social security card. And he's like living, in, <laughs> living like some hermit in Armored. the forest, like survivalist. Yeah. Well, uh, so I guess I don't know. So I guess um, uh, yeah. Or it'd be cool if you put yourself in a simulation and you maybe like uh, you did know, or you could put yourself in one of those like anime situations where it's like <laughs> you get to relive a life. So like you get to like live a life and then you like oh, take your consciousness it. inside of it and then it transports it like into a baby. Like uh, and then you get to like have a like reverted like adult mind inside of a baby, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just take advantage of like every, all this knowledge you have how everything works. So That's it's like interesting. I'm already I'm like a cheater like I'm on level ninety nine and I'm like <laughs> fighting all the level two stuff you know. But, so it's like, but say if, say if none of that stuff was possible and you had to die with that normal. <laughs> Why you gotta life? put limits on me, man? Save your head. I can answer however I want. Up, up to maybe hundred and thirty. By the time we're old, maybe the technology will get us up to one hundred and thirty. But hell no, I don't want to live that long. But how, how long? They say, you know, if you had to have one method, I have an interesting one I'm about to tell you. <laughs> but also, I want to talk about the possibility of uh, our us uh, not being able to go into those machines because. Uh, near-death experiences. I guess I'll talk about that real, real quick because, uh, right. in fact, one person, uh, since she uh, saw my video, she sent me a message and she wanted me to use it in uh, maybe the next video or whatever. I guess this is the next video because this is going to be dropping first, but my other uh, next video, my main cool visual uh, video that's going to be dropping uh, Hey, you're not putting after. cool visuals into this? Some, like a few, but this is meant to be yeah. like a quick uh, little bonus for people, but then... Oh yeah, this is quick. <laughs> well, I mean, quick in my production time because I've been delayed by the holidays, having family over. Because uh, and oh, okay. yesterday, yesterday, Despite I binged, how long we're talking, for, I binged yeah, I about it. nine hours uh, of editing yesterday, something like that, like on and off nine hours. Like right. so, anyways, the near death, near death experiences. So she said that her, her uh, abusive boyfriend uh, was choking her in the car, and she was basically uh, leaving life and then next thing she knew that she floated outside of her body and she was looking down at the roof of the car where she couldn't even see herself being choked by the boyfriend anymore and she was hovering in the air and there, there are hundreds or thousands of these stories going back to ancient times even and I know that scientists say that oh it's a hallucination of the brain but uh, there's a bunch like the one that I covered in my first video uh, you can see a lot of weird things once uh, your brain gets starved of oxygen. It hits you right away. Yeah, as soon as you lose blood flow to the brain, it's very quick. People have <laughs> That's been, why if you put someone in a sleeper hold and you get that out. artery, yeah, they yeah, you can make a pass out really quick. But the thing is, though, there's cases where people have been died. The guy in my first video was named Danny and Brinkley. He had multiple lightning strike uh, near death uh, near death experiences, and he was dead with no brain I heard activity. Once you get struck with lightning, you're more likely to get struck again. I forget how I that guess, works, though. I don't know. But but anyways, he had no brain activity, no heart activity, no detectable sign of life for, I think it was uh, 21 or 22 minutes. And All our instruments can always improve. It could be that. But also, there's been other cases where there was a woman who drowned. There was a, in a recent Netflix uh, documentary in the first episode called Surviving Death. She uh, drowned in a uh, rapids uh, river. She was underwater for like a, a ridiculous amount of time, had near-death experiences. Are those white water rafting trips? Yeah, it went wrong. And, I always wanted to go on one of those. It sounds fun, but I can't handle it with my back. <laughs> Except for the drowning part. I can't, be, I can't be doing that physical <laughs> crap anymore. Yeah, yeah, it would definitely hurt the next day, or maybe the next week or month. <laughs> might mess me up even worse. <laughs> but, uh, so for that reason, I don't think that... Uh, that it's possible to transfer a human consciousness. And also, how do you think you got here before you were a baby, before you were even a sperm cell, before that even? I mean, time was existing. Somehow we blinked into this existence. 
And so I think that whatever happens after death, you're, and, and there's something about, uh, remember, there's twin studies. Why do you think that you know? What I'm saying is there's twin studies where they try to treat each twin identical and in every way to see if there's differences between their personalities. And they do, did this for years and multiple trials with this. And the twins always had different personalities and different uh, fears and different uh, irrational things about them. Nature so, versus nurture, sure. But so, they do always have similarities that uh, they don't get away from. Yeah. The, Certain traits are more likely to be genetic. Yeah, so. genetics for real. And that's yeah, what so you see in things, diseases and everything. Yeah, they learned so, a lot of interesting stuff from those studies. Yeah. So anyways, back to the death thing. Pick your way if you couldn't uh, live on in a machine. <laughs> what year? Which way? I would want um, a new chemical to be discovered in my body. I'm the only one who has it, and it's the key to unlocking fusion energy. So <laughs> when I'm really old, they uh, plug me into a power plant, and uh, I'm able to provide enough energy for the entire planet from my dead body, and so, I become like, like a matrix. glowing, a glowing light bulb. It's like the matrix <laughs> of a person. <laughs> that would be a pretty awesome way to go. That's more dramatic yeah. than mine, but uh, <laughs> I was gonna say. At least they would remember me. Yeah, I, you know, I got this pain, this ankle and spondylitis. I'm starting to get more upper back pain and stuff, and I can't even imagine how painful it's gonna be. Like when I'm an old man, it's like, oh my god. So whatever the year is, if I can't function, yeah, I, can't I feel make like I'm anymore. already there. I always tell people like getting that people tell me getting old sucks. Like I'll hear that from family members and stuff, yeah. and I'll say I'm already there. So I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a young geezer in a way, but, but I have a young yeah. mind. I have a, but I feel I want to get like an MRI or something. Probably would be a good idea. To you get, should, like, but I don't get, know what's going don't on with surgeries. my vertebrae and stuff. But anyways, but my what my death thing yeah. is my way. I want to go is whatever year if I can't function anymore, I can't make comedy anymore, which is I want that to be my main thing coming up uh, with Sergio, my friend and Eric and Sam and uh, a bunch of others. We got a whole squad of people already. And uh, if I can't do my videos, like how I'm doing it now or anything else, whatever time that is, maybe 60, whatever, I want a asteroid to break up over the atmosphere. And as I'm sleeping in bed, just take me out quick. A little rock from an asteroid. That I think that's a pretty cool way to go. Like a little mini one that like just goes through your skull. Yeah, through the roof, through the skull. I don't want Leave everything these... intact around yeah, you. Exactly. Just like a exactly. small hole as possible, just like through <laughs> your brain. Yeah, exactly. Because that way, I, oh, I don't. I want it to be the universe sending a message that what what I've been saying in my videos is true, and uh, the comedy or whatever in my life that would be cool. Like the universe, and no, no other little breakup uh, rocks the universe in the, that it was in their the time vicinity. Ago. <laughs> yeah, it would have like very low odds of something like that happening. Something exactly, that's why unlikely. I think that's why I think it would be so freaking cool to have it happen. Like, uh, if you had to go in any way, I mean, everybody's dying from cancers and heart attacks and all this bull crap. And so, if you had to choose one cool way to go, I, I think asteroid or mini mini gamma ray burst the same way. A mini, a mini. But one. you get to turn it to the Hulk first. <laughs> well, they say that's the most violent uh, force in the universe is a gamma ray burst. It's like a way stronger than uh, nuclear weapons and stuff. Well, not versus the Hulk though. <laughs> the Hulk. I don't even. Hulk I don't is follow. the most violent force in the universe. Oh, I, I forgot that, that <laughs> phrase. But, yeah. No, the phrase. Yeah, you know, he has the tight purple pants, and then it plays that music. Da, 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 and he family, like jumps. I think I joke. Why is his <laughs> pants still on? He, his, his shirt rips off. Why is his pants still on? They don't want to show Hulk junk. Is that what's going no, on? No, they don't. Yeah, <laughs> that's only on Reddit. You can see the Hulk junk. Mm -hmm. There's too many videos I've uh, clicked on something and they it was Hulk. They actually have that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like, getting, like a whole thing. It's like getting yeah. Rick rolled with that song, Rick Ashley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a Hulk, Hulk junk, junk Rick roll. <laughs> yeah, there's a oh, whole man. thing. Oh. <laughs> Or that, or that porn star, that black guy, like that meme that was going around, that huge black guy, like that sitting on the bed. I, I don't even understand what it is, but he's naked and they barely cover his uh, junk. <laughs> Whatever that meme about, was. A guy called Mandingo. Yeah, yeah, that's Mandingo. it. Mandingo. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember. I haven't seen that one going around. Memes are the best. I freaking love memes. Like for me, I'm always trolling. You know who uh, came up with that word? You know who started that word? Oh, I just I just heard that recently. I forget though. What was it? 
Who? Um, oh, shit. I fucking say it now. I'm <laughs> blank blanking on his name. Oh, Richard Dawkins uh, coined oh, that term. Dawkins. He's the guy, you know, he is, he's the guy oh, I know. who is God delusion, long. Red, the British yeah, God right. Delusion creator. I, I share, I'm in the Alan, yeah. Alan Watts group on Facebook. I encourage you guys to join. We got a cool group. I actually posted. And he said that before the internet. I actually, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, I posted a Deepak Chopra versus Richard Dawkins debate, and it gets so heated, and Dawkins is getting all angry, and it's in front of a Spanish-speaking audience somewhere, and so they start with the Spanish announcers, and it is some of the funniest, awesome... Uh, and I have to say, if you totally abandon logic, then perhaps you would think of that, you nah. goddamn buffoon. <clears throat> when he gets angry, he's <laughs> like Richard the ultimate... Dawkins impersonation. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I would have to practice that. I don't do that one too good. Like, But... Uh, Anyways, at one point, uh, Deepak gets him on this hilarious point, and he's like, uh, but who is science? He, he says, who is science? Ooh. And then uh, Dawkins <laughs> says, well, I am science. Oh, there you go. I got a little Dawkins in me. He goes, I am science. <laughs> and then he goes, you are science? Or something like Where's that. Like, like, and then everybody in the crowd starts laughing. He goes, no, 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 I did not say that. Or, oh, what did I do, a Jamaican? <laughs> you know, man, I'm terrible in my British... <laughs> Wait, so he said, I am science, and then what did the other guy say? Yeah, Deepak. I, I'm a Deepak fan. What did he, say? Uh, he, he says, so you are science. I may have butchered this a little bit, uh, but in the watch group, I actually put a timestamp on that video, like in the comments, of where that funny uh, exchange happens. So, yeah, hit it up, everybody who sees this. Join us in Alan Watts, uh, Alan Watts land, I guess we can call it. Yeah, so he started that thing, the meme, um, just like it's kind of been uh, brought. I think millennials kind of grabbed that and we used it. And it's cool because um, what context, it's like a though? picture. A picture is worth a thousand words and a meme is, uh, I guess, even more because it, what he it said? communicates more than a picture. What, no, what context uh, did he use it in originally? Do you remember? I said it. Marco <laughs> said that. <laughs> but what context did Richard Dawkins use it in his book? Do you know? Like what, uh, what was referring to? it was it had to do with the transfer of ideas and it had to do with um, oh, okay so it makes sense I'm not sure if he did the mind virus thing if he started that terminology someone else is kind of similar to a mind virus where it's like ideas can spread like a virus and um, hmm. and uh, either the most entertaining or the the best ones tend to spread the best and uh, we've definitely seen a Big increase in the power of, of memes and memeage. Oh, I, I spread them every day. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> anything that makes that me laugh. Life. Anything that makes me laugh or gets me inspired, I love it. I spread awesome inspirational quotes and uh, yeah, it's yeah, fun. Elon is known as the meme lord. That's one of his unofficial titles. He's uh, pretty good at uh, finding some pretty good memes. He has a lot of people feeding them a lot of good memes, though, as well. Oh, like, I would uh, imagine. People throw memes his way, and, uh, you know, it's funny that people, I think some people <laughs> can actually make a living off of basically memes hey, you at know, this point. You get enough of a social media following. And, you know, uh, uh, have you ever heard of Squeezy Jibs? I think that's how you say his name. He's my favorite. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't heard of him. Well, he's not, like, a meme guy, like, but he makes, like... Uh, hilarious videos all the time where he acts like a uh, gangster. He's a white guy who acts like a gangster who's like pretty dumb. And, I'm pretty uh, white right now, my <laughs> guy. I don't get much sun these days. Yeah, I still got some leftover tan from the summer. Yeah, you? you're darker than me right now. Oh, uh, I read outside every day where you think I've been reading about Napoleon and Julius Caesar and the Mongols and all sorts of crap, man. So I always yeah, do it I in the sun. I, I love it. HOA that's all up in people's business. You're in Arizona. You could take advantage of it way more than me, but I'd probably get I skin could. cancer real quick out there because I, I never, I would never stop going outside to read if I had like a good uh, chair and you know. <laughs> eh, a little sunscreen go, goes a long way. Yeah, but it's annoying. Then you have to shower, otherwise you're all greasy and crap. So. Oh, speaking of showering, I recently discovered a new thing with showering. It's, my, it's like upped my shower game big time. Like my showering, <laughs> it's like a whole different. Like I'm a, a new person. What the heck? Like this is yeah, Old it's showers? crazy. Uh, no, I always uh, I started. Uh, I did those before. Have to be a little cold at the end. I like to be a little cool at the end because I'm usually too hot throughout the whole shower. Mm. Um, but this new thing, I think I was actually watching. Um, 
Cowboy Bebop uh, did a live action on Netflix. It's oh. another classic anime. Oh, and I, I was finally Cowboy checking Bebop. it out. I'm rewatching that right now. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's great to rewatch because I was so young when I first saw it. Yeah. And um, so in the a live action version, uh, one of the big scene, one uh, the the face is this girl on the ship. She makes this big Valentine. thing about like um, yeah, Faye Valentine. Yeah, and uh, she talks about uh, she's like uh, a bath, and then you uh, no, you take a shower, you wash. You take a bath and you take another shower, but that's not it. That's way too much work. But she says, and if you want to go really crazy, loofah on a stick. And I was like, loofah <laughs> on a stick? I got to try that out. So then, so I started looking <laughs> at, I saw I put loofah on a stick on Amazon. And I was like, okay, so what is the deal here? Okay, this is not too expensive. There's some options here. And then, you know, I like to look at um, what's the most best-selling in any category. So then I clicked on that <coughs> for all the bath accessories. Mm-hmm. I discovered that um, uh, two new things. One of the best-selling things is like this brush. And it's like a long wooden handle, and it's got a two-sided brush. One's pretty rough. Max-gra-ja. Yeah, it's kind of like, but so you can, <laughs> but it uh, takes up soap well. Mm-hmm. And uh, one side's way too rough, the other side's not bad. And then another thing is like a, there's a silicone little thing about the size of your palm, and it, it has long little silicone. Weird. You know, like those little balls that have the, used to be like cool to feel and stuff that would have oh, the long kind yeah. of silicone things. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Remember those? Yeah, it's kind of like that, except it's like uh, not so loose. And it's like and so it's may not so it never really falls apart because I'm hmm. poof, I use poofs and body wash and they always fall <clears> apart they unravel and it's such a scam you know you end up spending <laughs> I, money. I, I never use any of that stuff. What I just racket. use Dr. Bronner's soap. Dr. Bronner's uh, soap. Just and, hand soap. You take a no, bar of no, soap. No, no, it's called Dr. Bronner's. It's like this liquid stuff. You have I just hold it and then you guys you have to dilute it. It's like it's those, those weird soaps that are like real pure and very natural. And it has like a uh, like a million words written all over. It's like they're lecturing okay. you to read it while you're in the you shower. You have to dilute it with water. Yeah, people don't know that. Beforehand in a jug. It's in the giant. How do you apply it? How do you apply it? I just hold it like, like this, and then I pour it like <laughs> I pour it like this, and, like then I hold, and then the water comes down. The water comes down, <laughs> and you make sure it's like a good amount. Then I just go crazy with it, and that's it. And so that's, you use your hands. Yeah, I don't. Use, I don't use in no tools. I don't need tools. You can't get good abrasion with your hands. See, this is the key to this thing, <laughs> is uh, and the the sud factor. So with these things now, I try these out. Now I'm so excited to take a shower. It's like <laughs> I have a whole. It's like I have a whole fresh layer of skin, and I, I, I'm convinced if I did this when I was young, my I would have had way less acne as well. Mm. Um, I wish someone had told me about this. If you're a young person, Amazon, <laughs> this thing, okay, it's a silicone pad, and then uh, they're like the number one and like the number four thing on Amazon best selling bath accessories. One is like, I forget the brand, but it's like a brush on a stick, and the other thing is like a little silicone pad. And you could put body wash on it, just like put it in. And the silicone pad is pr- fairly soft. But um, it's like fast, and you could move it over everything, and it takes off way more dead skin cells hmm. than a, even a loofah does, while still being really soft. And of course, it never fucking falls apart, which is fucking great. <laughs> That's a fucking rip off. The fucking loofah's falling apart is a fucking rip off. You're I more fucking pissed than hate me. Him. You're more pissed off than me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that pisses me off. It's a total rip off, and it's waste. You know, it's like plastic everywhere, and like the water, and they're fucking garbage. It's a ripoff and it sucks. And they're made to fall apart. It's planned obsolescence. It's bullshit. So, but this uh, silicon thing, uh, yeah, it's like does a great job. And uh, you get to reuse it forever. You just hang it up in your shower. I'm in Arizona, so it's extra dry here. So I don't have to even worry about mold yeah, at all because the air dry. dry. That's why I keep it rubbing my nose. People are going to think I'm like a cokehead or something because, like, I got allergies. I got uh, dust mite allergies. And when it's dry, these dust mites, even if, if your house is pristine, these dust mites are around. I'm allergic. I was my like, house is really fucking pristine right now because I, I had I my remember. sister's cat recently. Oh. And I was looking after her. As soon as I got out of there, I was like, I need to vacuum everything. I need to wipe everything. Jeez. I like mop, steam mop the floors. 
I uh, you went through with the vacuum and uh, washed everything. All my clothes got yeah, yeah. Everything is good touch. Let's mix it and up. I got the fucking shower thing going now. Yeah. So it's fucking amazing. All right. All right. Let, let's mix yeah. it up, though. Let's, let's talk about stuff wait, people wait, wait, are interested wait, 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 wait. in. Wait, right. wait, wait. This on. is interesting. Wait. So, so the silicone thing does a great job. So I tried both. The other one is rougher, but uh, it's a really interesting feeling. It's kind of like pins and needles. But, man, it's really... I don't know if you ever saw the movie Gattaca. Did you ever see that movie? I did. I forget what it's it was. It's one of my favorite one. movies. I did. I, um, I did see it, but I forget which one it yeah, is. So in the oh, movie, oh, with the like, sun. With the sun being all bright uh, or whatever in that one scene. I forget. What was it about? It was in well, the universe. It was, it, sci-fi, right? It, well, yes, it's in the future, and like genetic engineering is kind of the point where everyone <laughs> goes by your DNA. It's like your whole life is determined, and he doesn't have... He's going to, you know, so he wants to go some places DNA wouldn't let him. So he pretends to be someone else and he has to like scrub his skin really hard every oh, day because right. if he leaves his skin cell somewhere, I like they could get his DNA out of that and they could tell that he's not who he says yeah, he's going to be. Didn't he switch bodies? Isn't that how he, did, he switched identities with another person who was like had oh, good okay. genes and but he was in a wheelchair so he kind of took his identity and he gave him like money and he worked at this job basically mm-hmm. at like the SpaceX equivalent oh, of the where they because he wanted to go to space he wanted to be like an astronaut and they they launched like a rocket every day in those days I think we'll get there now because of Elon <laughs> Musk but so yeah so it's like that so he's like scrubbing the uh, the brush does a really good job of uh, you know scrubbing the skin and, and you know it might be a little rough for people at first so I say start with the silicone and then but also it's for behind the back you know you can it's always <laughs> hard to get that spot you can't reach it can really get, it gets that spot good is so. this a paid advertisement I it would be <laughs> if I fucking Amazon wasn't a piece of shit and they allowed me to have affiliate links without having a large uh, subscriber count. Oh, that's crazy! All right, they used to just let you hey. do it, but now you got to have a certain amount of subscribers. Let's mix it up. I want to hit up one of these history con- uh, things I got. Money you, which... I got a bunch of Tesla stuff still too. Yeah, but know? yeah, but we, you already uh, worked on doing Austin. the Tesla thing. You were doing that already. Now we did the, the well, here's shower. a couple of topics. What do you that want? I, just World War Two. Or Julius Caesar. Let's mix it up. Gotta, you're already doing your Tesla uh, and Elon stuff and uh, since we came back. Let me do a little bit of the... Right. Well, the, I don't know much about... I mean, I know a little bit, but, yeah, but I uh, want, definitely uh, want to mention the 25K car that's going to come out <laughs> and the Cybertruck. All right. And, uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. we got to yeah. alternate a little bit here. We'll do it after Julius Caesar because he was a very fascinating guy. All right. How, how about we do that? Uh, so basically... He was not like a filthy rich guy when he was young. He uh, went through the ranks, became a young lawyer. Uh, and the weird parallels between uh, modern day uh, United States and even uh, Julius Caesar's time is uh, that the prosecutors are always these like in- young, inexperienced, like uh, straight out of school types, like how we see now. And the ones making the big bucks, defending the rich celebrities, are always the defense. And the same thing was true in ancient Rome. Uh, so after that, uh, he, yeah, you make more money defending the douchebags. Yeah, he, he never did. He money. never did the uh, yeah. uh, the defense though. So Julius Caesar was a really awesome guy. And so basically, in Rome, there was like this uh, whole crew of liberal reformers. It started with what they were called the Gracchi brothers. Uh, it was Caius Gracchus, uh, Caius Gracchus, and Tiberius Gracchus, and. Over and over again, these, like, I call them liberal reformer types in Rome, but really they didn't call them liberal reformers. That's just kind of like a, a modern equivalent. Did he, to did he reform the military in a big way, too? Do we uh, see no, like military that, strategy? It, it wasn't him that made the reforms. Uh, that was uh, Caius uh, Marius, I believe, because what happened was at, at a certain point, they didn't have enough troops because there was a requirement to... Uh, for the to be a landowner in order to be in the military. It they, sounds familiar. I might have heard some yeah. of this episode, so, actually. So they waived that. I've only seen a couple of hardcore history episodes. Yeah, you got to watch uh, that. The Roman one I've listened okay, to about uh, three or four times. That and the yeah. Mongol one. So, so they got more people in the military, right, by waiving that requirement. But, yeah, but, it wasn't but, but, just but landowners. What, what changed, And though, they also kept the professional army that they paid to yeah, be uh, it, uh, all that's the time, what, yeah, right? exactly. Because yeah. they would lose experience. Because if you're on one campaign and everyone becomes veterans and they learn yeah, a lot. Yeah, they go back to their farms. And special, then they go back and then you have another war and it's all different people. And they don't know <laughs> what the fuck they're doing again. So then they all, yeah, again, massacred left and so their armies were crap. 
So these reforms, though, what it, this was the beginning of the end for Rome because when the, when the reforms came, it made it so uh, just like here, just like America. Well, <laughs> pretty much. I think we're near the end too. All civilizations <laughs> fall, to be honest. And uh, Remember, Sen- well, Seneca I- wrote about that too. He, he expected the Roman uh, civilization to fall, the Roman Empire to fall. He wrote that. He, it, I mean, it blew my mind. Uh, he was about. 2,000 years ago. It's easy to be a doomsayer, though, because no one calls you on all the times you're not right, you know, but as soon as you're right, they'll say, you know, he called it. About this, though, about uh, the reforms, it made it so armies now became super loyal to their generals or their the consuls, which was a top position. There was always two, uh, two consuls. Maximus Decimus Meridius. And what was cool about Rome is... To a murdered son, <laughs> husband to a murdered wife, and yeah. I will have my vengeance yeah. in this day or the next. Pretty much. But there were some uh, crazy battles, like in the Punic, uh, the second uh, Punic War, where... Like your politicians are literally on the battlefield. Your presidents, your consuls are on the battlefield. Oh, I'd love to see that. Fuck it's yeah, all, get all the yeah. 80 year old on the battlefield. Joe Biden, Joe would... Biden, where Last you at, man? Second. Where you at, bro? Come to China. <laughs> all, of them are, all of them are in their 80s and 90s. Yeah, na- na- Everyone's na- over above 60 and 70. And now we want women into the military. Come on, Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi. Where you at? Get a sword. Well, all they got to <laughs> do now, realistically, is control a drone with a joystick. So mm-hmm. they probably would do fine. Except they don't know how to work computers or anything. They'd be like, how do I turn this on? All right, and let me get back to the, uh, the beginning <laughs> oh, of no, the I end. Oh, no, I killed a child. The, the beginning of the end, though, was those military reforms. Because at the end, uh, Julius Caesar had his army, and uh, the lawsuits that would happen, oh, the militaries became very loyal to their generals or their, or their consuls. And so Julius Caesar had a, a tremendous a more power problem. all of a sudden for the generals. Yeah. And, and so suddenly when, they're tempted to take over the government. Right? And, and they had an incentive for ego reasons, for the fame, and also for the riches of invading neighboring countries. <laughs> you and your cup. <laughs> <laughs> cool how it blurs out. I like to see the transition. So... Anyways, so they would uh, the generals or the consuls they would always get the most wealth and the most uh, the most um, like riches and spoils and the or the, the most... consuls again what were they this uh, thing's lagging out a little bit consuls are like the top, the, con- the, the top two presidents basically and there was oh, always political position no yeah. but they were also the generals on the battle uh, fronts as well oh, they're and both. E- okay. every other day the, each consul would take a turn. On being in control every other day, and this sometimes they had an interesting political system. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. But get this: sometimes you'd have a really aggressive consul, and with a really passive one who didn't want to fight. And so you would have, uh, say, you're up against an army. The armies would pick up on who's the aggressive one and who was the passive one, and the other armies were able to take advantage of it. And Romans, the the Roman, uh, uh, what the hell was this term from the main warriors? I forget mm. the term. Anyway. Oh, it's Tuesday. Oh, good. It's Tuesday. We can all take it easy today. Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, it's Wednesday. We're <laughs> oh, the fucked. Legionary. Run. It was the legionary. <laughs> That's the word. It came back. But so these yeah. uh, legionaries. So these legionaries, they were part warriors, but they were engineers. Anytime they would have like a potential like good area to set up a, a, a giant fortress, they would do it. Strength the, the Roman military yeah. as their engineering. Yeah, so oh, I'm going to deviate a little bit. Lines and siege what? weaponry and roads. Okay, anyways, the, one of the coolest Julius, my favorite battle scene of any of, of them is when uh, Julius Caesar was in Gaul, which is modern day France and some of the other surrounding countries. The tribes that they were invading and killing, and like uh, some of them were loyal, some of them weren't. The tribes at one point under this guy named Verking Gedorix. That's such My a skin badass is so name. Soft. Skin is so <laughs> Anyways, Verking Gedorix. <laughs> he was the leader yeah. who united the tribes against the Romans, and so the Romans, even their food sources, the 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 tribes that were helping to guard their food sources, they turned on the Romans. Everything went to shit at the same time against Julius Caesar and all of his guys. So they went to invade where uh, the main guy was, this Verking Gedorix guy was. So they set up, uh, he was in a fortress on a hill surrounded by rivers. They set up this, uh, the Romans set up this giant fortress at the base of the hill because they were kind of trapped in. And then another whole army of tribal people show up behind the Romans. And so you've got this giant fortress surrounding the, their, uh, the enemy fortress of the tribal peoples, as well as this whole uh, army behind them approaching so julius caesar and his guys are surrounded by two entire armies of these tribal peoples 
So then Julius Caesar and his guys... Surrounded, outnumbered, and they took away the food. Yeah, it was messed up. But also, Julius Caesar, they had enough food, though, and the people who were getting starved out was Verkin Gedericks and the main guy, uh, Verkin Gedericks and and his troops there. So at one point... Or anyways, so Julius that, Caesar, they set up spike, a long siege. They, they set up spike traps. Julius Caesar and his guys set up spike uh, traps. I forget how many days this lasted, but they got so hungry where Ver King Gedericks was that they started sending out their women as they were trying to send out their women for food. Imagine how desperate you have to be if you're going to send away your wife for food. And then so you had all these... Happens all the time. Go make me a sandwich. <laughs> That's a good joke. I like that one. <laughs> Thank you. But, but they, Except in warfare with spike traps, it was pretty dangerous. Yeah, it was horrible, especially with... You, you consider Imagine all the there rape. was a spike trap on the way to the kitchen. Imagine how much rape... <laughs> oh, you're me... I love sexist jokes. But anyways, imagine the... Imagine, like, the wipes... If they were in uh, Roman captivity, these guys were alone without their wives. You're just sending them to get raped for food. Anyways, but Julius Caesar rejected them. And so the, all these women and, uh, were in the middle of no man's land between the two armies. They refused to take them. They wanted if to... it was me, it might be like, oh, you know, I find a good looking Roman guy. They have food. Let me go in there. Okay. <laughs> Forget about my husband, you know. Mm-hmm. I never really cared about this in the first place, you know, I think. And, you know, here's some intel on the enemy forces. I make some notes. I learned <laughs> to read secretly. You know, my husband didn't allow me. He would beat me when I thought I was reading. But I secretly learned to read. And, you know, know, now I'll tell you. I just want food. And, you know, I don't know what the can... language situation would have been, though. But anyways, let's get uh, yeah. back to it. Uh, anyways, the the rear army, see, they, they, they had no, like, communication tactics between the two armies. They would have loved to synchronize the attack on the Romans from both sides, but they couldn't. They did their best. The rear army attacked first. The Romans repelled them. All these spike traps people again getting impaled, like, uh, Mortal Kombat style, and you do the uppercut and then launch the guy into the spike pit, uh, you know, in that one level, the original. Yeah. What did they have anything to keep, like, maybe if you have a sundial. I don't know if they had sundials back then. That would have been helpful, huh? If you send, like, a horse rider between the two armies and be like, well, you know, what is this? Or you just have yeah. to send, like, a rider. It's like, we're going to attack. And you do but, at dawn. But then you got a bunch of slow people. They're waking up slow. And they're like, eh. <laughs> so, yeah. so then this, this intense, yeah. this crazy battle breaks out over, I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of people, like, Tons of people covering miles. It's like incredible, epic battle. The Romans are in their fortress. Everything goes to hell, and then you got cavalry running around. And uh, what was uh, the coolest part is over and over again with Julius Caesar, he had German cavalry with him. So the these horsemen, for whatever reason, they were like. Did the other side have cavalry? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but the German that would be a big I, advantage. I think they had some, but uh, they were the German ones were the by far like the most epic cavalrymen. About four or five times in previous battles, the German cavalry saved the day and saved Julius Caesar's life, and that happens again in this epic one, where these just when things looked as bleak as hell, with Julius Caesar running around with his big red cape so he could be seen and to inspire his troops. The enemies see this big red cape, and they're trying to kill him as much as anybody. They're trying to kill the leader. So it's it was so intense and so crazy, and the German cavalry saved the day. Eventually, you think so. Sometimes there's a weird thing where, like, they would ignore, like, certain people on the battlefield. They had some weird rules, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you think seen, they would want to. <laughs> you see the show Rome from HBO years ago? It's amazing. Have you seen that show? Yeah, I don't think I finished it. Yeah, uh, but the beginning might, is why I, I was going to mention it. The beginning is yeah. they have Verkin Gedericks, and, and what the Romans used to do is on a, a, a massive parade. It was like the greatest yeah. of honors for people. Julius Caesar got a, a triumph where they have this gigantic celebration, this big parade. They won that battle. Yeah, but he's he had, the Germans and that used. Ones. I mean, they conquered the Germans at one point, right? So that's yeah, from, like a conquered from, people, and suddenly the Germans are riding with them. Uh yeah, you had so they always later no, on in the Roman Empire. It wasn't it wasn't right? like countries it went on like for that. a long time. It, it wasn't like whole countries like you can't think about the countries as like the countries today. Remember, France was Gaul. You had a bunch of separate little tribal uh, peoples in that area, and yeah, to the east over there would have been probably more tribal peoples. Uh, what was that? Oh, uh, back to the yeah. triumph in Rome for Julius Caesar in the show Rome. 
check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, what happens is they have Verkin Gatorix on one of the parade floats, and what they would do is that they would capture the the enemies, the leader of the en enemies, tr bring them right through Rome, right through <laughs> the center street. They'd have this big ceremony, and then they would kill the leader in front of everybody. And if you had a mm -hmm. triumph, uh, Rome was like the most egotistical of societies ever. Like each household, each proud family household had a whole room dedicated to the triumphs and the victories of the past and everything. And so... Trophies and stuff. Yeah. It was uh, incredible. Uh, I could tell you uh, about the Second Punic War if you want. That's a Roman one. If you want, it, are interested or, or hope to... Or oh, the 25k that car now. <laughs> All right, go for it. <laughs> okay. So, Austin. Next Generation Factory. <laughs> Mega castings. Batteries, uh, you got lots of land. Uh, they're <laughs> cheaper than ever to uh, make these factories. It's only like a billion or two investment, and you know before it used to be double that. It's going to get cheaper and cheaper. And they built like uh, I forget. They only use less than like ten percent of the land that they bought right now. So the amount of some people think they might bring all his companies there and because mm -hmm. they have the land for it, it but they could easily. They could easily build like three more, four more factories, and it'll still be less than half of the land there. Wow! So, and uh, he's also gonna have like a park there. But uh, so yeah, <laughs> imagine like once the supply chain gets set up and like all the efficiencies of having everything in one place, uh, and it's gonna be massive. So, um, so okay, so a lot of land. It's going up. Um, it went up uh, very fast, um, and. Um, it's going to, I think the cars are going to handle way differently. Everybody's moving down there. Too. Joe Rogan moved down there. Elon moved down there. Austin's yeah. like booming. And I heard the prices raised big time down there. Like it became Real estate very, prices, houses yeah, have doubled. I mean, they've the also game. doubled in Phoenix as well. Alex Jones Basically, is down there. a bunch of places uh, that are nice weather without, with lower taxes also. The saw, red states. You know, Everybody's going to the red states. It's just the reality. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they, they don't want to pay taxes. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, you got good weather, so yeah. Yeah, so it is blowing up right now, and uh, so it's kind of like a second little tech hub, and so they're gonna have some skilled labor, and uh, it is a good setup. And I guess he asked employees like where they want to move, and a lot of them said like we'd want to live in Austin. The other second contender was like Oklahoma or some shit like that. <laughs> like they put up like a giant statue of him. <laughs> And like, and there was like a big field. They put up a statue of Elon because yeah. everyone was trying to draw him to their spot, like initially. So everyone put forward something to try to lure them Wait, in. Wait, who who had the second? Uh, Elon had that as the uh, second consideration. You said, or was it? Yeah, pretty much in the running. Like it was got narrowed down, got narrowed down, and I, I was, it was heard, all about uh, like South Dakota is supposed to have the most economic freedom. Uh, years ago, at least they did. The last I heard, I wonder if you ever considered that. That's yeah, the only thing it has, though. Hmm. <laughs> Does that watch anything else? Yeah, it's culture. So empty, Where's your culture empty. at? Maybe I don't. I can't imagine like what the culture is over there. Never been there. I heard the Dakotas used to be just one, and then like they were like, well, North and South Dakota. They uh, it's like, wow, well, we need more Dakotas. Like, what the? <laughs> is the purpose of this? I think yeah. uh, like vote wise, it's like, oh, we get extra votes for this rural area. We get double the amount of senators. And you know, people in the house for this area of land barely anyone lives in. I think there's a strategy there, but <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah so uh, uh, Cybertruck's going to be coming out there. They're starting with the Model oh, Y. I think so. And cool. it's going to be Cybertruck. It's a Halo. It's the Halo truck. Who doesn't want to drive the fucking Halo truck? Yeah, it I is do. pretty much. Are, are, aren't didn't you say you were going to get one or your stepdad? I have them on pre-order. Uh, you know, you have one for expensive. yourself or for who? I do. I do also for me. Also for uh, my stepdad. Um, cool. And uh, you know, uh, trucks. It's going to be a big truck. You know, those are usually hard to drive. Uh, I've driven some. Have you drove, driven pickup trucks, like full size? Mm, no, that's actually I've never had that experience. You should try. Uh, well, when they're a lot bigger, they're uh, it's harder I to did maneuver a around. I, I, I had a U-Haul. Yeah. I drove that. 
But, yeah, uh, you know, like the turning radius isn't as good, so a lot of people are intimidated. They're like, you know, this is rough to drive around. I don't want to drive a pickup. I mean, you're high up at least, but it's like huge. How, how big is the window turn as well? How, again, the Cybertruck. How big is the windows? Are I, I've been well, in a, a thing, Camaro. Camaros are so hard to see. They have like tiny windows in the back. It's like pathetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, a lot of glass. No, no shortage of that in the Cybertruck. Hey, remember, it's remember we were at the League of Legends huge. thing, and the guy in the Camaro was trying to back up out of his parking spot, and he hit the minivan when we yeah, were leaving. Yeah, Because yeah. the, the, the visibility is just like so terrible for those. Makes sense. <laughs> now that you point that out. Yeah, and they were, they were yeah. looking at us because there was no damage. You they were looking at them. us. Yeah, yeah, they, they were, like, yeah, they were making sure, like, like yeah, uh, they were seeing if they could bail or not. <laughs> it was funny. So I was like, uh, there was no I, damage. You noticed that I didn't really notice. That. I'm like oblivious to a lot of shit. Yeah, but there, there was uh, no damage. There was no. I problem. was probably thinking about Tesla, or I was thinking about League of Legends. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the cyber truck, it's actually going to have rear wheel steering though, so it's going to handle like a car because the rear wheels are, can actually turn mm. along with the front wheels. Most cars, you know, the rear wheels can't turn, right? So the rear wheels of the cyber can, can truck it go parallel you know, park, like it's sideways, like that. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. It can, it can, yeah, the whole thing can like move like <laughs> kind of forward and backwards, but and even in a regular turn, um, it's going to be able to make a much tighter turn because of that. So it's going to handle more like a car, even though it's a full size truck. So you get that's the dope. utility of a truck with the maneuverability and uh, uh, the speed of a sports car. Well, you know, there's three different types motors, of versions. Which which ones are you getting? The second, the two, uh, was it two battery, three battery, and one battery? Right, those are the options. Uh, it has to do with the amount of motors, but you got it. Just replace oh, okay. batteries and motors. Oh, okay, motors. And uh, they switched it up a little bit now. Um, they were going to have the three motors be the most expensive, and now they're doing four motors. So they're stepping <laughs> it up. So like one crazy. motor for each wheel. Because if you have one motor for each wheel, you can really do a lot of different things That's that crazy. you could otherwise. Traction is going to be unimaginably good, you know, uh, the best thing you could possibly have. And yeah. uh, the body being stainless steel, uh, I'm super excited about that because, uh, you know, it lasts forever. You know, dings, like uh, there's no, no ding. What about rust? No, rust. No, rust. No, stainless steel it doesn't yeah, rust. That's crazy. Regular bodies, yeah. If you're especially in, like the Midwest or something or they salt the roads, those yeah. are your... Your car's body might fall apart before the, the engine does in some cases. Oh, it's happened. It so, happens a lot. So stainless steel will last forever. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about paint. It should turn it's going to handle like the, a sports the back car. back should have an espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> With a it's going to have an air compressor. Steel. It's going to have air compressor built in. It's going to have electrical outlets. So you could... Plug in an espresso machine and have it in your car. <laughs> Hire some people and have like your own little cat. And you could have the air pressure like plugged into it. Yeah, you really could. You can like open it up and have a cafe on the back of it. And it's going to have the little cover that comes down to cover the back, <laughs> oh, you know, man. which is cool, right? Because usually a pickup truck, that back is open. That sucks. People can yeah. steal shit out of your trunk, right? Yeah, that's cool. So that closes just as secure as a regular car. And you can't um, see into it, too. When I worked at the rental no, car place, everybody was always requesting the non-hatchback vehicles because I was hearing horror story after horror story about people having the hatchbacks and there's... See valuable stuff, stuff in there and people decide to break in. And also, you know, things are worse than ever. I know uh, last I heard San Francisco was the smash and grab capital of the USA. You know, anywhere where jumps there's poverty. Around, jumps around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. anywhere where there's poverty. Of poverty. Yeah, we got lovely, lovely system set in place for, yeah. for increasing poverty. Uh, yeah, I just saw that on the news. Over time. There's, there's nothing they can do. Like uh, I'm a big Tim Pool fan. Tim Pool, uh, he, he talks about how he would go and interview these homeless people and say, "Hey, look, there's this program here. As long as you're willing to work, they'll set you up with an apartment beforehand, and uh, you know you'll have a good life. It'll be a good springboard up." And they're like, uh, most of the homeless people, they're like, "Why would I want to do that?" I get everything I want right now, and I have freedom, you know, so there's, uh, and that goes into what Seneca talks about, uh, the ancient Stoic philosopher, I'm going to be talking about him a good amount in my next video, 
He's minimalism and stoicism yeah, is getting by on less. You should practice poverty. I don't know a lot of millennials are getting by on less. They're yeah. kind of just they're getting yeah, used to it. And then you get the, the tiny homes and the RV living now has been booming. But, but what Freedom Seneca counts said, like a lot for a lot. You know, control over your yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Especially with a lot of how companies are. I mean, it's like a lot of times you have more educated, um, you know, younger people, and yeah. yet you can't get, you know, uh, these uh, high-paying positions, and you end up with a boss who might be an idiot, like, let's say you're in the nuclear sub, luckily <laughs> that guy was smarter than yeah. his boss, was telling oh, him to, to nuke America, and he had to talk his dumbass boss down, you know, same this, thing. This is crazy. Uh, also, <laughs> also, Kennedy opened up back channels, but hang on, before I forget that Seneca part, Seneca, <laughs> Seneca said... Dumbass uh, is... Um, yeah, I love. Look, I got my thing going right now. So I, I wear it every I you're gonna have day. A tattoo. Every day. Remember, huh? you shall die. All right. It, it, oh, you added an extra thing to your body. That's that's uh, <laughs> excessive excessive. Yeah, plus the tattoo, of course. But all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Seneca, let me get this out already. Practice. Uh, prop. He says you should uh, practice poverty because that way you'll be less afraid of it afterwards. And uh, so uh, I believe it was him or. Uh, one of them uh, was, would walk around barefoot uh, around Rome just to act like he was poor. And he points out how nature provides so easily everything that you need to survive. And you, you should not be afraid of poverty. And that ties in with the, what the actual... A there lot you of go, the viewers. Poor. Everyone, try out poverty. You Temporarily. Know, just go out barefoot afraid. just for a couple of days. And, you know, you see it's not the big deal. You know? I, I thought about doing that. So you could try channel. things. You could try more not, risky things. Not myself doing the poverty thing, but I, I was going to pay maybe for some hidden camera technology and have uh, some homeless guy walk around. Hopefully he wouldn't bring it to a pawn shop and screw me over. But <laughs> I'd like to see the, the homeless fights experience. fights 2.0? <laughs> 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 I'm surprised that he was even around. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that was pretty popular. Elon Musk said a similar thing uh, with, uh, he was like, I lived really poor for a long time, and I realized I can get by on like a couple of dollars a day, yeah. you know, for food. He's like, it's it's like almost impossible to starve in this country. So he's like, so what? So yeah. I, I, I wasn't afraid. Yeah, so I was willing to, to bet all my money on trying new businesses and stuff. So True. Yeah. Yeah. And same with me, like right now, like with this uh, comedy venture, uh, we're putting in many thousands. We're probably going to have a billboard, a controversial billboard uh, put up over Chicago as well. That's gonna good cost money. advertising revenue, <laughs> good choice of money. A good, a good publicity billboard. stunt. No, it's going to yeah. be like a, a pu I don't want to reveal the idea because somebody's going to steal it if I do. But it's going to be. People are going to be looking at their, their their phones as they go by the billboard. <laughs> watching the show and crashing. Be on there. <laughs> They'll be watching the show as they're like uh, just really crashing their cars all over the place. No. <laughs> well, you hopefully. No. Nah, they would just see the name, see the the website. will be a real easy website to uh, you know remember, and people will be able to show up and watch the show. So yeah, it's gonna. Be, man, I'm crazy. Like I I can act really well. I, I went to this like 70 year old acting coach guy with my uncle. Did an improv thing with a girl I never met before. And I killed it. I could like switch. And he was just calling out the emotions, and like we were supposed to be high school students and having emotions. And one second we'd be like, oh, fun. "You're mad. You're mad." And it's recorded, but I never got a copy because I wasn't. What the fuck? I never paid for the class. I was just a, a temporary. That's visitor. how they get you. That's I, how they I don't get know. you. I don't know. If I asked for one, I probably would have got it. But anyways, so we're high school students. We're supposed to act they call out one emotion after the other like so you're madly in love now we hug and stuff yeah, right and now into, or, right uh, now i'm the, I'm the acting and coach i'm gonna do <laughs> no, really happy i don't want to do this right, right now, now. happy <laughs> <laughs> okay sad let's do sad <laughs> fuck yeah Oh, not bad. See, when you have the real pain to draw from, it comes out easier. Now, that's going to be a part of the show, actually. I'll, I'll give you a little teaser because nobody can steal this because it'll be my acting. Because uh, So, like, uh, something bad happens in the show, and somebody shows me something that breaks my heart, and it's ridiculous, and it's over the top, and it's funny. And then I just go, like... <laughs> no! No! <laughs> you know, something crazy like that, you know, just... I. Bust out any kind of acting, you know. <laughs> the turnaround. <laughs> I've never seen myself do that before on camera, so I'll be interested to see how that looked on uh, the editing process on this video. 
but for real, like we did, uh, the, me and that girl, we did like a love thing. Uh, you guys hate each other. You, you annoyed by each other. I, I snapped at her and went over the top. Like I can pull off most things. So uh, that's why I wanted to be a main character in this uh, comedy thing coming up. Like <laughs> it's going to be so ridiculous. And everybody's been laughing their asses off when they see the plot lines and stuff. So. All right. Improv sounds fun. Yeah, I would like oh, to. Uh, I always wanted gonna, to do some improv. We're going to have a bunch of improv, too. Me and Sergio, uh, definitely, we were improv every day. Like, uh, funny story from high school. Every time we leave this class, there was always some kid with a mohawk in front of us, like, in this crowded hallway. And we go, hey, kid with the mohawk. And then we just act like we're talking, like, normal. And we did this, like, every day for, like, a year just to troll and have some fun. And the guy never, or, or maybe even a couple years, I don't know. But the guy never figured out who we were. We were just, it was always just a hilarious joke. You would always turn around and confuse. <laughs> and we would always just act like we're talking to each other. So me and him got the acting down. So that's why I wanted him to be in it as one of the main characters. So it's, it's going to be ridiculous, man. <laughs> what are you looking at? Uh, sounds that way. I was looking at my list. So I said Cybertruck. Um... Oh, you I, did find uh, your list the other then. thing is the 25k car. I just kind of made it up. Oh, you made, right okay, now. I got you. Uh, uh, earlier. Um, what, what about breakthroughs in science? What about quantum computing? What do you know about that? I heard it's so much powerful. It's so much more powerful, but it's less stable. Like I put in the first video I made. But I heard it's different. Like it's powerful in a different way. It's, like uh, it's less stable. It's not as powerful as a regular supercomputer. It does not good at that stuff, but it's good at different stuff that a supercomputer mm. isn't good at. I don't know exactly what it is. Well, did you see in my video that part? It, 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 uh, I forget the exact thing that was in the video, the exact numbers now off the top of my head. But I looked it up. Uh, the Google's quantum computer accomplished something in uh, four minutes that would have taken like millions of years to uh, calculate. It was something like that. I forget the exact... Uh, right, yeah, some weird thing, but it's only yeah. like specific things that it can really kind of figure out. I mm -hmm. don't know exactly what they are or what the use cases are for them yet, but um, yeah, definitely, uh, I mean, that's a whole thing to get into. Oh, yeah. It's going to be... Uh, what's our What's our runtime at? Uh, it's getting uh, pretty good. It's 11.50. If, if I show it, it's gonna. If I look, it's gonna show it in the re recording, so <laughs> I can't see it. All right. Well, that last thing on my list is pretty much that we haven't covered is the twenty five K car, and uh, that hasn't been officially announced yet. There's right. a chance. Let's, uh, let's cover this, this and wrap it up this then, month. I guess. Yeah, uh, it's a chance it gets announced this month. I kind of doubt it. By uh, Tesla, you said? Yeah, okay. because Elon's going to be on the next earnings call, and he's going to do a, uh, a product uh, update. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what's going to be on that, if there's going to be a new announcement or he's just going to be clarifying what's uh, coming down the pipeline. But uh, we know that it's coming eventually, and uh, it's going to be a huge difference because there's a lot more people that can afford a car that costs $25,000 versus a car that costs cool. $45,000. And it's going to be um, almost this, just as nice as the others? I think it really will be just as nice in some ways it might be, you know, they try not to make them better as they go on, even though they're cheaper, but they can't help it. Yeah. So it might even be nicer in some ways than the more expensive car. I don't think you'll be giving up much. It might be a little bit smaller, but I don't think you'll be giving up much in size. It's still going to be the safest car in the world. Who I'm hoping they the Cybertruck really does well, and they make it like a whole theme where they do then a car cool. with the stainless steel and I would love that as well because uh, I love the nice. idea of a stainless steel body is great. Uh, I hate the maintenance of a, a painted uh, car body. Remember I was telling you about that BMW that just got revealed at the car show in Vegas, I think it was, that auto uh, show that they do. It's like a massive one in Vegas. Uh, that was the talk of the whole show. you got to look this up. It's... Uh, is that like mostly electric uh, vehicles this time, or am I thinking of a? I, I don't know. I don't follow it. One. I don't follow it too much. But this was a sedan type of BMW, and it was uh, alternating colors at will between uh, white and black with these like triangular like. Right, you said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that was, was it awesome. like a light panel, like it emits something? Because that seems like that I wouldn't want. I don't know. I, I just saw the brief news story, and everybody's talking about it, and, yeah. and they say for sure you'll be able to have. It might be color. like a prototype thing, where it's it really is now, flashy, but, impressive, and they never come out with it. They say know, they're, they're bringing it out, 
they're bringing it out. They say because there's so much buzz about this. This one, there's yeah, they all say. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't find Tesla's the only one that really doesn't change their design. Like everyone else, you see a badass prototype and then the real cars, like yeah. a, you know, or some shitty version of it. <laughs> but uh, there's a paint that kind of looks like it changes color based on like your angle and how you yeah. view it. Yeah, I've seen that those. is a thing that's pretty simple. To, I mean, it's not yeah. super simple, but it's like pretty doable. Even in um, Grand Theft Auto video that. games, they show that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Flop paint, I think it's called. Yeah, they're um, real. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, oh, uh, that was, uh, I was going to say something else, but uh, I forgot hmm. what I was leaning to. But uh, I don't know. But that was a pretty good uh, talk. Uh, yeah, wrap cool. it up here. And yeah, then, we'll wrap uh, it up. It, it was cool. It was fun. Time. Yeah, I got plenty of other stuff and history. We haven't even touched on Alexander the Great, World War One, World War Two, Hitler with sarin gas near the end. Oh, dude, there's so much history stuff I could go into. I've heard so much, man. It's like my, my brain is drowning. I may not be like perfect on every fine detail, but I like to study a wide variety of things, like from spirituality to history and all that kind of stuff. So, of course, yeah, I like the eighty twenty rule myself. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't be an expert in anything, but if you could get like, you know, you could get like yeah. 70, 80 percent of the knowledge of a lot of things with like thirty percent of the effort to become yeah. like a true master. Yeah, for me, the so way my kind of cool. my mind works, like where I capture the main points. But I don't know like the specific details unless it blows my mind. Like the Assy the last Assyrian king, I think this is the coolest name ever. His name was Asher Banipal. This, and these were like the ancient Nazis. Like they were crazy. They would rule through violence for like hundreds and hundreds of years, and then, like eventually, the people around united and stormed their capital named Nineveh in one of the most violent and crazy. Uh, <laughs> destructions of a people of all time dude it's history's nuts in schools it's so boring so you guys listen to hardcore history with dan carlin like tons of what i just said is directly from him and uh i had awesome a teacher show. though too i had a yeah. teacher who was like he was pretty cool about roman stuff i remember him yeah. telling me that the romans used to like stab you with a sword like yeah. underneath the rib cage like through the stomach and like go up and i still remember <laughs> yeah. that because he was so you know yeah. he made it fun he knows what 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 kids, what boys wanted to hear. Uh, by the way, hoplites, are you aware of the Greek hoplites? Uh, they're the ones who have the long spears and they have <clears throat> these uh, shields and every single man is responsible to the people to the right and left of them. So the worst thing that you can do is like start running away because then it, it jeopardizes the whole porcupine type of stance. So on flat terrain, these guys are like unbeatable. If it's like a straight on fight, flat terrain, uh, and what made Alexander the Great and his uh, troops even more effective, they tripled or quadrupled the length of the spears. And so they, it was like, you can't even get near these guys. You can't hurt them because of the shields. And Alexander the Great and his guys are so outnumbered, they invade the Persian Empire and just start wrecking everybody. It's like the, my favorite story of all time is Alexander the Great's for sure. That story is the best. But all right, that was a nice little brief history thing. I guess we'll wrap yeah. it up. Nice chatting with you, bro. Bigger is better, All right. as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. likewise. Enjoyed this a lot, and cool. uh, hopefully we uh, Stick talk around. Don't, don't go away right away. I was going to chat with you a little bit afterwards about a few details. So, all right. Peace out, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed Later, this podcast. Later, everyone. Uh, all right. This is Marco from mm -hmm. the Musings by Marco mm -hmm. channel, and uh, yeah. we'll see you around. I'm Brian, remember, from Dead Man Dreams channel. We're both on social media. We're both on Twitter. Uh, yeah, this will be on YouTube. If you want to see my social media stuff, uh, just look at the banner of my YouTube channel. It got links. Uh, subscribe on Facebook. I'm very active on there. I like to interact with people. I've interacted with everybody so far. So, uh, much love to you guys. Peace out. Momento Mori. Remember, you shall die. Seize the day.